starting the meeting. Uh, I don't see her yet on the platform, but I do know that uh, she was called uh, in the chief whip's office. But I don't know whether she started there or she will start here in this meeting. I will just check. Yes, because I believe that she spoke to you about it so that I can be able to continue the meeting. Yes, yes, that's what she has indicated. Okay. Oh, okay, I don't know if I can start or we'll be two chairpersons at a time because um, I wanted to, to start since the time is now. Um, the time for the meeting to sit. Um, okay, okay, yes, th thanks, honorable members. Thank you, thanks for coming. Uh, uh, thank you, DM. Um, I, I, the chairperson of the committee. Yo. She has. Uh, hello, Cherry. Cherry, your, your line is, is terrible. I'm not sure if you can. Sorry, but now you are not audible. Morning, Mr. Poltina. Mamo Gomba, can you please um, mute your mic? Thank you. Oh, okay, honorable chair, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Do we have quorum? Uh, uh, chairperson? I can hear you. Do we have quorum? Mr. Poltina? Hello? Good morning, uh, Mr. Boltina has got a, um, some network issues, so sometimes his connection just goes. Okay, thank you, Petra. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Hello, Chair, can you hear me now? I can hear you now very clear. Do we have quorum? You are gone again. Good morning, Chairperson. It's Kuzwayo. If I may intervene there, yes, Chair, you do have a Quran. Okay, thank you, uh, Nock. <clears throat> Can you please, will you be able to flight the agenda for the meeting? Petra? <sighs> Uh, thank you so much, uh, Petra. Um, honorable members, <clears throat> um, let me take this opportunity and welcome uh, all of you. Also uh, welcome uh, the Deputy Minister uh, of Tourism uh, with his team. Uh, today uh, we are going to receive a briefing uh, from the from the department as it appears um, on our agenda, hoping that all honorable members got the copies uh, of the agenda. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Dr. Kuzwayo, uh, if you have apologies um, because seemingly um, Mr. Boltina, <coughs> Mr. Boltina's network um, is going to be a problem uh, for us uh, today. Do you have apologies before you, perhaps? 
Not now, Chair, but I'll check with him offline, then I will confirm later. Thanks. Okay. Um, Mamu Honorable Gomba is going to be chairing um, the session because I will be on the road uh, driving, uh, meeting the chief whip of the majority party. Uh, she called me to an agent meeting. So um, Honorable Gomba will be uh, chairing uh, the meeting because I don't want to drive and chair uh, the meeting at the same time. So she will be the chair uh, of the meeting uh, today. Um, without um, wasting time, uh, honorable members, um, I'm going to um, allow uh, the department uh, to present uh, so that we have ample time to deliberate on the presentation uh, by the department uh, today. Um, over to you, Deputy Minister and your team. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, let me extend my, my greetings to you, Chair. Uh, the members of uh, honorable members of the portfolio committee recording in progress uh, the, the the officials of the department led by the dg and the officials from dbsa uh, as as you have indicated chair we are here to to make a presentation uh, in the context of the a memorandum of understanding or agreement between ourselves as the Department of Tourism and the Development Bank of Southern Africa. Uh, historically, honorable members will recall that uh, the department has been implementing infrastructure project uh, for some times now. It started way back when it was a Department of Environmental Affairs and Tourism. And subsequently, the department was split. All tourism related projects then remained with the, with the department. And then the implementation of those projects has been a, a mixed bag of success and challenges. Uh, which, as you will recall, on the audit outcome of the 2017-2018, reflected huge uh, discrepancies in the manner in which the project is being implemented, which resulted towards uh, the appointment of the government technical uh, advisory services, the, the GTEC, to, to do an assessment on the, on the, on the implementation of those projects, uh, which then resulted towards, uh, came to the conclusion that uh, the department needs to get a, an agent that will assist uh, it in the implementation of the project for it to be successful. Uh, that's why, therefore, as a result of that, the department then entered into a memorandum of understanding or agreement with the with the DBSA. Uh, as we all know, that uh, the development bank, uh, as we know that the development bank of Southern, Southern Africa, it's a it's primary a development finance institutions. Uh, which focus on, on delivery of the infrastructure. Uh, and therefore, it, 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 it became the, the main viable uh, agent that was available to, to then enter into an agreement with. So, 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 the, so, so we'll, we'll then, without waste time, then hand over to, to the DG. Uh, to then uh, give an introductory, she will then indicate to who will then present, take us through the presentation. 
uh, which um, I, I'm, I hope honorable members did receive the presentation in time. Uh, DJ, over to you. Thank you very much, dear. Um, good morning, honorable chairperson, honorable members um, and colleagues. Um, we will run two presentations. Um, they are fairly brief. Uh, but we will, we will take you through the details, honorable members. We will do the first presentation from the department side uh, that, that just uh, gives a broader context. Uh, DM has already covered part of it. Uh, that, that then goes into a bit of detail with regards to the approach that we are taking uh, in the execution of the different projects that we're dealing with, but the broader framework agreement as well in terms of how is it being executed. Uh, DDG Chetia will run that. And once we are done with that, then we'll immediately go to the DBSA part where they would then reflect on how practically they are actually doing those things. And then we will then hand over to uh, the, 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 the members uh, for, 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 the, for the rest of the discussions. Um, I will then ask Didi Chetia to, 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 to then uh, take the first presentation and uh, she will be followed by Tulani from DBSA who will then do the second presentation. Um, Petra, if you may. Thank you. Good morning, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members. Uh, thank you, DG. Good morning, Honourable DM. Um, this is just a very brief overview uh, of the uh, presentation. Um, as uh, DM has indicated, it will essentially cover the following areas. Why the DBSA, a little bit of the scope and application of our MOA, uh, sustainability and operational support for approved project, and then uh, why we believe that there is value for money in working with the DBSA team. The first slide, um, DM has covered the background, uh, but it suffice to say that our MOA with the DBSA came into effect on the 20th of November, 2020. Uh, it will run for a period of three years until the 30th of November, 2023. The agreement, of course, may be extended in writing by both parties. And essentially what the agreement says is that the DBSA is appointed as an implementing agent of the Department of Tourism. Within the, the space of destination development, this is a very simple curve, which, which essentially de um, demonstrates how destinations develop over time. Um, and essentially a destination can develop very well, it can go into stagnation uh, at, at some point if there are not enough visitors coming through or if there aren't actually proper facilities that support visitation. It can go into decline or it can rejuvenate. And what we really want to do with the work that we're doing in uh, destination development with our pipeline of projects is to make sure that Destination South Africa continually rejuvenates. Um, and never actually reaches the point of stagnation or decline. Uh, if we can move to the next slide. There are reasons why the state, of course, must intervene. Um, and largely the state has to intervene in, in the tourism space, particularly in terms of infrastructure, in, in order to ensure transformation, but also to ensure that there is geographic transformation and we have an even geographic spread of projects, and that we also have spatial transformation uh, taking place, um, particularly that we have community owned um, and um, run businesses. This is really why the state must intervene, uh, particularly in, in the tourism space. The reason that the state should intervene um, is that if we don't, the private sector actually doesn't invest or won't invest um, until there's been significant investment by the state. So this is the reason that we develop a pipeline of projects for progressive implementation. The, D, the, the DEM has already covered that the DBSA is primarily a finance institute, but they also run an infrastructure delivery division and they're primarily focused on 
actually accelerating uh, the quality of social and economic infrastructure delivery. They have within the DBSA team, of course, uh, extensive relationships with built environment professionals. Uh, they're also a state entity, which means that they are then, of course, familiar with the PFMA and operate within the framework of the PFMA. And they have experience in delivering infrastructure through the EPWP uh, framework. They also have extensive experience and staff uh, in terms of facilitating social facilitation and ensuring that the projects that are delivered are in fact delivered uh, with uh, communities rather than for communities. The DBSA, in terms of our MOA with them, will run our projects from beginning to end. So they will be responsible for all of the planning work uh, straight through to construction and uh, ensuring a proper project handover. Uh, the work includes new builds as well as maintenance of uh, existing infrastructure. Um, and within our MOA with the DBSA, there is also a skills transfer aspect to ensure that there is transfer of infrastructure uh, skills from the DBSA team to our own team. That work actually also includes understanding the project management um, itself, but understanding the software that is used by the DBSA team and understanding all of the processes that take place uh, in between from planning all the way through to construction and, and handover. Um, as I've expressed, there are three types of projects. There's the working for tourism projects, which are community projects. Uh, they, these are new builds in many instances. There are also community um, museums uh, that we're working on, as well as tourism infrastructure maintenance and beautification. Uh, the DBSA, in our initial discussions with them, actually use a method called the asset-based community development method. This is a particular participatory methodology that works with community members to identify what the, uh, the priorities are in, in a particular project, but it also works from the basis of understanding all of the assets um, that, that a community has and works with the community to build on those assets so that once you actually exit the project, you have a sustainable approach in place with the community at the center of, of the methodology itself. So this is a social facilitation method um, and this is the, the method that the DBSA uses in working with communities. Within the team, um, there are uh, various roles and responsibilities. So the DBSA team has a program manager who's responsible for the overall facilitation of the program uh, and make sure that the projects actually uh, run on track, uh, the procurement of all of the professional service teams, as well as the contractors. There is also then within the DBSA team, a construction project manager that then acts as our uh, implementing agent and manages all of the construction uh, on site. Um, and then there's a financial administrator that monitors the overall program performance um, of, of the work that we're doing with the, with the team and ensures that there's proper uh, financial record keeping on each of the individual projects. The DBSA itself then outsources uh, work to professional built environment uh, teams that are then responsible for designing the projects and all of the technical aspects of the projects. Uh, a, a separate development facilitation service that works with the community in terms of social engagement and ensures that all of the governance structures are intact during the project um, and that there is a maximum participation. And then contractors, of course, who are responsible for ensuring that the project is completed to the required spec um, and ensures that all of the uh, local labor content is ensured in delivery of these projects. From a program governance perspective, we have two sets of committees. One is a project management committee that meets every second week, so twice a month. 
Um, and this team then is the technical team. Uh, the, that this uh, project management committee is usually chaired by myself, uh, working in tandem with the team at the department and the team at the DBSA. And we review progress and challenges on a fortnightly basis. There is then a monthly steering committee uh, meeting, which is chaired by the DG um, and the, the group executive uh, from the DBSA. And this is an oversight committee that then, of course, mm -hmm. oversees the work that is being done by the project management team um, and assists with progress challenges and decisions where, where these are, are required. In terms of sustainability of the projects, um, the DBSA team is responsible, of course, for all of the technical work and the construction um, and uh, until the projects are handed over. But while the DBSA team is working on the technical work and the um, construction elements, the team in the department is working together with communities to actually look at long-term operational uh, funding uh, and sustainability of the projects. Each of these projects is different. So in each of these projects, um, the, the owning entity has a preference of whether they would like to run the facilities themselves or whether they actually want to have an operator in place. And we work very closely then with the owning entity to ensure that they are properly capacitated to firstly run their governance structures, secondly, to actually appoint an operator if uh, this is what the owning uh, um, entity would like to do, and then to work on the long-term operations and sustain sustainability of, of the projects. Um, operational funding, um, as you will be aware, is always a challenge. Um, and within the EPWP system, we're allowed to pay for the actual FTE and job creation targets. And operational funding then comes out of a separate budget within the department if this is required. The work that we're doing is really um, to work together with communities to build capacity firstly around governance structures, and then secondly, to actually set up um, so that the operations beyond the completion of the construction project are actually in place. Um, I think that uh, portfolio committee members would be aware that one of the, the, the biggest challenges really uh, is um, if communities fail to take ownership or responsibility for these completed projects. Um, these projects work best when there is ownership and responsibility on the part of the owning entities. And this is the relationship that we're working very closely to build to ensure that once we leave projects, the only entities are then fully in charge of the projects in their space. The last slide then, um, uh, honorable chair and honorable members, uh, is to actually speak to the value proposition um, in terms of, of using the DBSA. Uh, the DBSA brings with them specialized staff and systems to meet the construction industry standards and requirements. They have um, absolute efficiency in procurement and management, and they have experience in managing economies of scale. Um, they have also undertaken infrastructure delivery for various departments and are very familiar with the government frameworks, but also the frameworks of how the built environment operates. And by using the DBSA, the department actually is able to access a number of built environment skills and built environment professionals to undertake the scope of work in the program. I think at this point, Chair, this is the last slide of the introductory presentation. I'm going to hand over to Mr. Chilani Nungalo, who will now take us through the DBSA detail around how they actually implement the project. Thank you, Petra. Over to you, Chilani. Thank you very much. Um, honorable Chair, honorable members, DM, DG, DDG, and fellow colleagues, good morning. Um, as outlined, I am going to be taking you through the presentation that gives details of what DBSA does and uh, 
where we are in terms of the MOA and the projects that are required for the implementation. Next slide. It has been outlined that a memorandum was entered into between NDT and DBSA for the implementation of projects, which was signed and agreed on the 20th of November, 2022. So the program entails the implementation of infrastructure build and also maintenance projects, which were allocated to DBSA for the financial years. The purpose of the presentation is just to communicate the information and update on the status quo of the projects and also to give um, outline of how DBSA implements the projects. Project management and delivery will be according to the FITBIM, which is the framework for infrastructure delivery and procurement management. Next slide. So the FITBIM framework for infrastructure delivery and procurement management has different stages in which we follow as the DBSA. We practically use it because it was set out to be one model that is effective for governance and also ensures that processes are followed and uh, are guided in the delivery of all projects. So the different stages that are outlined in the FITBIM are the pre-initiation, initiation concept, design delivery, design documentation works, handover and closeout. Just to go in and give a little example of each of them. In pre-initiation, this is when we are going to get a need from the client being NDT in this scenario. And DBSA will go out to at least go to the different facility and look at what exactly is required out of DBSA. And this gives us an idea of what services or um, professions we are going to need in order to implement the works. And then we have our processes whereby we are going to appoint service providers that will be implementing the works that have been identified. Once we have appointed the professional service providers, they are going to take us through the different processes in the, in the planning the design and also the construction phase of the project. So in the initiation phase, they will be giving us basically an initial scope and what has been discussed together with the discussions that they have held with the communities to try and identify the needs that the communities want and also to advise whether a certain scope or need that has been said by the communities is feasible or not feasible. And then we're going to have our concept stage where we now define exactly the works that will be done in that particular project. And design development, this is where we are going to start working on the designs and also interact with the different um, governing bodies that are out there. For example, um, for environmental impact assessments, we get to apply for EIA, get to apply for water use license. And then we also approve drawings in co cooperations with the different governing bodies. Then we have our design documentation stage, which is stage four. In stage four, we are going to be practically dealing with the preparation of all procurement documents. That will be your tender documents, as well as um, the bills of quantities for that particular project. We are then going to go out on tender to procure the services of a contractor that is going to implement the works. On completion of that stage, we then appoint the contractor that will be completing the works, which will be our stage five. In the implementation of the works, DBSA is also involved in the management of that service provider and the contractor together with the PSPs that have been appointed. Once the works have been completed by the contractor, we're going to have our handover in our handover processes, we will be submitting completion, all completion certificates. We will be submitting um, COCs as well as occupancy certificates. That is to ensure that um, whoever takes over gets to have all documentations that could be required in future and proving that the building is feasible to be used. 
The next stage will be the closeout stage whereby DBSA will be handing over that completed facility or structure to and the tourism department. This is the approach or the processes that DBSA follows with regards to what has already been previously dis um, discussed. We have different stages whereby we interact with the client to at least get um, approval and also get their sense on if we are going on the right direction. So we have our site visit meeting, PSP procurement, and then we get concurrence from the client to if we can go ahead and appoint based on what we have sourced out there. And um, we continue with the appointment. Then we have our inception stage. Once we have completed our inception and also our concept, we sit down with the client and we go over that information and get the client approval. Following that, then we move into our design stage and also our contractor procurement stage, where we will also require concurrence from the client to give us a go ahead that we can appoint the contractor that we have um, put up front after all processes have been completed of evaluations. Then the contractor will be appointed, the works will be done, we go into completion closeout, then we hand over the project and we can then follow up through with the client in terms of maintenance and advising how some of these facilities will have to be maintained, particularly where we might have generators or other systems that require maintenance plans. Next slide. In implementing the works and everything that we do, um, we try to achieve the following. Um, the tourism infrastructure development projects are expected to create temporary and also permanent jobs from com for community members during the construction period and also the operational period. This will benefit the youth who have limited prospects for formal employment and those that have been economically marginalized. And also economic growth, the promotion of domestic tourism to these facilities is expected to trigger economy activity for sustainable economic growth, youth development and economic empowerment, which will improve the livelihood and well-being of the community. It's not only that facility that would get to benefit once there's tourism, also the area around and also the other shops or vendors that are around the community can also get to receive um, some benefits out of the community or the facility that will be completed. And also shared value. Sorry, the previous slide, the last. Thank you, shared value. The projects have the potential to create shared value with the community through ownership. They get to have something that they have and work together to ensure its prosperity. The sense of belonging is something that most of the communities also like to have. They want to be responsible of something that they can see grow in their community and know that they had a part in it and it benefits the whole community. Next slide. The next slide just shows the different projects that we have currently with um, the tourism department and the different programs with the web packages. We have tried to put them in this slide according to the provinces. So for the first program that we have working for tourism infrastructure projects, the work package is construction planning, procurement and implementation. We have 19 projects under that program whereby five are in the Eastern Cape, three Free State, one KZN, six Limpopo, one Pumalanga, two Northern Cape and one in the Northwest. For the next compliance certificates, we have three projects, two of which are in KZN and one in the Northwest. For community tourism projects, we have five, four of which are in Limpopo and one in Pumalang. For the further detailed planning and construction, we have two projects, one in Limpopo and one in the Northwest. For the local community museums, we have five projects in total, two of which are in KZN, one in Northwest, one in Northern Cape, apologies, and two in Northwest. 
Then we have the India Atlantic route project where we have three projects, one in the Eastern Cape, one in KZN and one in the Northern Cape for maintenance and beautification of the provincial state owned attractions. We have 41 projects, seven of which are in the Eastern Cape, four free state, one in the Gauteng province, one in KZN, six Limpopo, four in Pumalanga, and four in the Northern Cape, seven Northwest, and seven in the Western Cape. In total, there are currently 78 projects. Next slide. Um, this is just a graphical representation of the projects. We have tried to plot them to show the distribution in which they are in. Unfortunately, the slide just brings them out too small. Next slide, man. <clears throat> the next few slides are the names of the projects in the different web packages that we have. So for construction planning, procurement and implementation for the 19 project, we have in the Eastern Cape, Maluti Hiking and Horse Trail, Twansi Lodge, Chalet, at Nyandeni, Great Place, Tatwa, Ecotourism, and Western Templeland. In the Free State, we have Kwakwa Guest House, spread for Dome Infrastructure through Monocha. In KZN, we have the Muzipen Kanui. In Limpopo, there's Matsila Lodge, PPD Waterfall, Oaks and Govet, Tisane, Royal Kalanga Lodge. In Pumalanga, we have the Misi Resort. In the Northern Cape, we have Blackfontaine Lodge and Kamisberg Tourism Development. In the Northwest, we have Manyane Lodge. For the further detail planning projects, we have in Limpopo, the Batonga, and in the Northwest, we have the Clamorang Dam. For the compliance certificates in the Northwest, we have Lehorutsi bed and trophy hunting. In KZN, we have the Isipupu project, which is owned by King Goodwill Cultural Development Trust. And in KZN, there's the Muzipen, which is owned by the Guajore Community Trust. For the community tourism project, we have in Bumalanga Numbi Gate, Limpopo, we have Nandoni Dam, Chatokwe, Ntititi, and Mapat. Next slide, man. For the community museum projects, in KZN, we have the Anton Lembede Museum and the Amatubi Cultural Heritage. In the Northern Cape, we have McGregor Museum. In the Northwest, there's the Soul Plucky Museum and the Lehorutsi Liberation Heritage Museum. For the India Atlantic route, we have the Hole in the Wall, which is in the Eastern Cape. We have Harold Johnson Nature Reserve in KZN. Then we have the Orange River Mount in the Northern Cape. Next slide, man. The maintenance and beautification program has 41 projects, which are named the Seker Vos Rant in Gauteng, JL Duba Precinct, Harib Dam in Free State, Maria Morocco, Philip Saunders, Stack Fontaine, which are also in Free State. And then in Pumalanga, we have Manyeleti, Andover, Songen Velo, SS Kosan. In the Eastern Cape, we have Thomas Baines, Hulega, Tueben Tuesa, Mpofu, and Fordyce. We have Double Mouth Nature Reserve, Bavian's Kloof, and Ovestin Nature Reserve. In the Northern Cape, we have the McGregor Museum, Don Kloof Nature Reserve, Raw Fontaine Nature Reserve, and also the Hohab Nature Reserve. In Limpopo, we have Makapans, Nwanedi, Bloberg, Musina, Mochachi, and Zuelele Nature Reserve. In the Northwest, there is Mafikeng, Haswane, Blomhof Dam, Molopo, Boskop, Putsalano, Mafikeng Hotel School. And then in the Western Cape, we have Hokama, Lookout, Cape of Good Hope, Dihoop Nature Reserve, Holfeld Kloof Nature Reserve, Cedarberg, and Hochelberg Nature Reserve. In the implementation to date of the whole program and uh, the overview, 
For the PSP procurement, out of the 78 projects, we've been able to appoint 76 PSPs to date with one project without PSP appointment. And uh, one project out of the whole list that we have mentioned has currently been formally canceled, which is the Nise Resort. Next slide, ma'am. This is just a program overview, um, giving progress to date of how we fare out in the implementation of the different projects according to the fifth team that was explained previously. Out of the 78 projects, the first projects are compliance certificates. Out of the three, one of the projects is still under concept designs and two of them are already under the detailed design and also the preparation of um, procurement documents. For the community tourism, out of the five projects, two of the projects are under concept design and three of the projects um, evaluation has been completed. We are currently just completing the concurrence between the DBSA and the department. Under the maintenance projects out of the 41, only one project remains under the bid spec approval. Um, we are currently sourcing out tender documents to go out and um, appoint a PSP for that project. And then for the rest of the 40 projects, they are all under concept designs, which are currently being re reviewed between DBSA and also the department. Under the further detailed planning and construction out of the two projects, concept designs have been completed. They are currently under review between the DBSA and also the department. Once completed, we will move over to detailed designs and preparation of procurement documents. For the 19 projects under construction planning, procurement and implementation, four of the projects are currently under concept designs. Six are under detailed designs and preparation of procurement documents. And five of the projects are under contact tender. Three of the projects we are currently between the department and DBSA completing the concurrence documents. And one project was withdrawn under this construction planning and procurement. For the local community museums, out of the five museums, five of them are still under concept designs. They are currently being reviewed by the DBSA and also the PSP team. It must be noted that when it comes to the museums, one of the delays that we are currently facing, um, some of the structures are very old, of over 50 years, and we do require consultations with heritage um, consultants to assist us in how we implement the works and correct some of the, the issues that we pick up in the structures. In heritage structures, you cannot really just go ahead and break down or repair or fix whatever work as any other building that is below 50 years. There is some way in which work are done and uh, a way in which we need to preserve the building and keep it the same way as it is previous. For the India Atlantic Group project, we have three projects which are currently under concept designs. Um, the designs are currently being reviewed by the DBSA and also NDT. So out of the 78 projects, out of the 78 projects that have been previously outlined on the other slide, um, one of the projects is, remains under bid spec, and then we have 57 projects under concept designs. We have eight which are under detailed design and documentation. We have five which are under contractor tender, and then six which are waiting for concurrence to be completed between the two. Um, DBSA and NDT, then we go out on constructions on those six. And one which was withdrawn. Next slide. 
This slide just depicts what I have entailed in the previous slide. It shows a graphical representation of the different um, stages in which we are in, the bigger chunk being the concept designs and all the others also having their slice in the pie. Next slide. The next slides I'll be giving individual um, progress of each of the projects as we continue. So for the Kwakwa guest house, it's currently on stage four, which is the preparation of procurement document stage. Um, the projects have to be returned that following the delay that we had between National Treasury imposing or stopping any procurement because of the preferential procurement regulations. This also applies to the next projects, the Fredford Dome, and also the infrastructure through Monocha. We are currently working on ensuring that we have this project out by this coming week. We, had, we have received a new formal communication from National Treasury, whereby that sub, su, suspension that was imposed has been lifted and we now have to continue with adding the preferential procurement regulations on the tender documents. Previously, DBSA had received exemption and we had removed all the preferential procurement um, regulations on the documents and we're about to go out and tender again. But um, suddenly after the correspondence that was received last week, we now have to revise our tender documents for the second time and go out and tender. So we anticipate to at least on those projects go out and tender by the 9th of June and the close of tender will be the 30th of June with the evaluation being completed by the 14th of July. And uh, we have our supply chain management committee, which we present or table all the evaluation that has been done, all the evaluation processes that have been done. And once we have completed, they deliberate and they can give approval if everything has complied to procurement policies. So we are going to be tabling our three projects on the 21st of July. And we anticipate sending out and ensuring we get concurrence from the department on the 23rd of July. Our site handover is anticipated for the 9th of August. For the next project, we have the Kamisberg Tourism Project. On this project, we are sourcing a heritage consultant to assist us in this project. It is currently on stage two, whereby they are preparing the concept reports. We are looking to go out on this project, um, projecting to go out on the 1st of September with the close of 10 on the 22nd of September, evaluation being completed by the 6th of October. Site handover is anticipated to be on the 1st of November for this project. And then for the next project, the Maliti Hiking and Horse Trail, where we have projects that have already been highlighted in green, those stages have already been completed. So in this project, the evaluation of tenders has been completed and we are currently completing um, concurrence between the department and NDT. Once that has been sorted out, an appointment letter will be issued to the contractor. We are looking at issuing the appointment letter by the 13th of June and hoping to have our site handover by the 27th of June. For the next project, Isim Tonsi and Katwa Ecotourism Development, these are also some of the projects that had to be stopped because of the National Treasury um, uh, suspension that was imposed on all tenders that had gone out. However, we are also looking towards ensuring that we revise our tender documents 
and to have them ready for tender advert by the 30th of June. Close of tender being the 21st of July, evaluation being the 4th of August. And uh, we are looking towards at least having site, over, site handover on this project by the 30th of August, 2022. The next project, the Chalet at Nyandeni and the Western Timberland. Evaluations were completed. Um, we are just completing concurrent between the two departments. We are hoping to appoint contractors by the 9th of June on this project, and we're looking towards having site handover by the 21st of July latest, of June latest. For the next project, we have the Royal Kalanga Lodge. PSP has submitted their concept report, which is being reviewed by DBSA. And they are currently working concurrently with, they are working concurrently on the other stages as well and not awaiting just a go ahead on this project. They have already started preparing documents which are going to be reviewed by the DBSA internal team by the 23rd of July. Once those documents are, are approved and all approvals have been received for the concept and the designs, we are hoping to go out on tender by the 30th of this month. Our anticipated site handover for that project is the 30th of August, 2022. Next slide, ma'am. The next project, Blackfontein Lodge and Manyane Lodge. Matsila Lodge and PPD Waterfall Oaks, Ngove and Disani. The DBSA is currently trying to ensure that all documents are ready for advert by the 16th of June. We are currently reviewing the stage two and stage three documentations and once approvals have been granted, the document, the projects will be ready to go out on advert on the 16th of June. Our target for this project to have site handover is the 16th of August, 2022. Next slide, ma'am. For the last project, MP Munisi Resort, the project was withdrawn. Next slide, ma'am. Hello, next slide. For the next project, we are looking at the Lehoruzi bed and trophy hunting, which falls under the compliance certificates. The PSPs have submitted their concept reports, which we are currently reviewing between the departments. Once they receive their approvals on this project, we are looking at least going out on tender by the 30th of June, 2022, with our anticipated site handover also for this project being the 30th of August. For the KZN Isipupu project and the Muzipen project, Preparations of design development and also tender documents is ongoing on this project. All documents will be submitted for review to DBSA and tabled to our bid review committee on the 9th of this month. We are hoping once approval is received for those two projects, we will go out and tender on the 16th of June, 2022. Our anticipated handover for the, those KZN projects is the 16th of August, 2022. For the next project, Numbi Gate, Nkambeni and the Mruli projects, concepts have been received for this project. Um, we are currently reviewing the information that has been received between NDT and DBSA. 
once approval has been completed, the, all the approvals and the documentations will be submitted to our bid review committee, which will analyze the information and also the tender documents if everything aligns to the procurement policies. We will then submit for tender for the 16th of June, 2022, with our anticipated dates being the 16th of August, 2022. For the next project, the Nandoni Dam. All reports have been received for this project. We are currently reviewing the information. We are hoping to at least to have all procurement documents tabled for the 26th of June, 2023, and uh, submit for tender for the 30th of June, 2022. We are hoping to have site and over on this project on the 30th of August, 2022. For the next project, the Chatokwe Game Farm. All evaluations have been completed on this project. It had gone out and tender evaluations have been completed. We are currently busy with concurrence between the two depart between DBSA and also the department. Once we have completed that, we are going to send an appointment letter to the contractor by the 11th of June. And then we are hoping to at least have site handover by the 20th of June at this project. For the TTT game farm, an appointment letter has already been sent to the contractor. We are currently busy with all contractual documents and everything between the contractor and also DBSA. We are hoping to have a site handover by the 13th of June, 2022 on this project. For the Mapate, evaluation has been completed. Concurrence has been received. We are going to be sending an appointment letter to the contractor by the end of today. And then we hope to at least have site handover by the 19th of June, 2022. For the Lutlamorain Dam and also the Batsonga project, all concept reports have been submitted on this project. We are hoping to submit to our bid review committee by the 9th of June and have our tender adverts being, being submitted for the 16th of June, 2022. Our target is also the 16th of August on this project. Next slide, ma'am. For the local community um, museum projects, these projects are currently on the stage two project, which is the concept of review. These are the projects where I mentioned that we have taken a little bit of a delay based because of the facilities or the structures that we come in across and we have been having our consultations with our heritage consultants on how to approach um, implementation of works on this project. So we are hoping to at least complete all processes and get all concepts and approvals and submit our bid documentations to our bid review committee on the 28th of July. Our anticipated site handover for the museums is the 4th of October, 2022. The next projects are the India Atlantic Route projects. Um, the three projects have gone through our concepts um, scrutiny. We are currently sitting with the department going through the concept reports. And once they are approved, the consultant shall be given a go ahead to at least continue working on the designs and also ensure procurement document processes are started. We are looking towards also tabling this to our bid review committee on the 28th of July, with site handover anticipated for the 4th of October, 2022. Thank you, ma'am. For the next project, we are looking at the maintenance and beautification projects. Um, for these projects, 
most of the work has been done on this project and not much designs are required out of this project. So our PSPs have been working concurrently together with the facilities to ensure that we get the proper scope of what is required to be fixed in this um, different facilities. For the first projects that we are going to look at in this slides, the second was Ran Jail, Dube, McGregor, Harib, Maria Morocco, Philip Saunders, Steck Fontaine, Manieletti, Endover Nature Reserve, Song and Velo, and SS Kosana Nature Reserve. We are working to ensure that at least these projects go out by the 16th of June 2022. And we are going to try and ensure that site is handed over to the contractor by the 16th of August, 2022. The next projects that we're looking at are Thomas Baines, Sulegua, Double Mouth, Pavian Skloof, Ovestin, Queven, Dues, Sampofi, and Four Dice, Don Kloof, Rofontein, Hoha. These are also the maintenance projects, similarly to the others. Most of the work has already been done on these projects. Um, consultative meetings have been held with the different facilities. Work that needs to be done has been identified. We are hoping to at least start engaging or having contractors on this site by the 16th of August, 2022. Molopom, Makapans, Nyanedi, Blowback, Musina, Mujaji, Nzuelele, Mafiken, Haswane, Blomhof, Boskop, and Butalang. These also are the same as the previous um, maintenance projects. All work has been completed. We are just going to try and ensure that procurement documents align and we go out on tender and hope to at least also have this project out and contractors on site by the 16th of August. The final projects that we're looking at under the maintenance are the Western Cape projects, Hoffelberg, Hogama Lookout, Cape of Good Hope, Dehoop, Wolfen Kloof, Cedarberg, and Mafikeng Hotel School being the last one. For the first top project, um, the first seven projects, PSPs have submitted all reports and um, all the work has been done on this project. Consultations have been held with the nature reserves, has been identified. We are hoping to have contractors on this site by the 16th of August, 2022. For the final project on the list, which is the Mafikeng Hotel School, um, it's actually in the Northwest, not WC, my apology. Um, a site visit was held together by the DBSA and the NDT team. Um, DBSA is currently in the process of procuring a professional service provider to do our investigative work and prepare our initiations and also our tender documents for this project. We are anticipating having a consultant appointed by the end of this month. Um, to date, yes, ma'am, the next slide. That's fine. To date, the risks that we have encountered or that we are anticipating, one of the biggest risks that we came across was the delay, which was because of um, the correspondence that was received from National Treasury to suspend all the works. That really impacted on our supply chain processes as we had to stop any bidding that was in the process for some projects, they were already out on tender and we had to at least suspend all the tender processes. This took a little bit of a knock and has really pushed our projects um, out of the way and uh, prolonged the dates in which we were looking at. So DBSA had already requested an exemption from the National Treasury regulations when we had received um, the suspension and approval was granted. However, a new correspondence has been issued whereby it advises that all procurement regulations 
of 2017 are valid and should be on all tender documents. This is where we said we are now encountering a situation where we need to revise all the documents which we had re-revised and taken out the PPR um, of 2017. However, this um, process is ongoing and DBSA SCM is currently ensuring that all the documents align to the National Treasury regulations. The delay in the procurement has an impact on the financial targets, which have to be outlined and have to be relooked at in the whole um, program. However, DBSA has increased the resources at supply chain to ensure that all processes for tender and, um, are achieved and all resources are working tirelessly to ensure that the work squad on tender and we achieve the dates that we are looking at. So in the implementation of the works, the professional services um, providers that have been appointed by DBSA are working simultaneously on the different work stages to try and crash the dates and ensure that we do not prolong the procurement of the contractors or this project. See you later. Next slide. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Look, okay, some great. I'll hand back to you, DDG. GDG. Over Thank to you very you. much, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, that concludes the presentation from the department um, and, and the DBSA. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Members. I hope everyone received the presentation. And um, we are now received, we have received the presentation from DBSA and I would therefore request members to engage on the presentation. Can we have the members um, raising their concerns or uh, their um, questions of clarity so that we can engage with the department and, as well as the DBSA? Thank you. I will start by recognizing the hands or if I see there's a delay there, I will start naming the uh, members of the portfolio committee in engaging to this presentation. I'm checking on the hands and I don't see any hand raised. I'll use my pattern. Oh, my Honorable. hand is raised, Chair Okay, I will start with the one who, who told me that the hand is raised. Honorable Hannah Winkler and Honorable Tleko will be the second member. Thank you, in that sequence. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to the presenters. Um, I just have a few questions. Um, with regard to consequence management, if uh, contractors don't complete projects on time, if they're shoddy workmanship, um, what are the processes that can be followed to either recoup funds or to then appoint um, new contractors? And are there deadlines um, detailed in these uh, service agreements or contracts so that there are milestones by this date, this needs to be achieved and so forth? And then again, how are we ensuring that um, the schedule is kept to? Then with regard to the handover, once the projects are complete and they are handed over, is there still going to be some sort of program um, on how to sustainably um, operate these projects once DBSA removes itself from the picture for these communities and, and for whoever else the stakeholders are that are involved? Um, then the other question I have is, 
Uh, given that the, uh, the MOA expires in March 2023, did both parties take into consideration the possible delays that may be experienced in the project implementations, um, even though there are extension clauses included in the MOA and what is going to happen um, in those instances? Then, given the challenges experienced by communities such as those witnessed by the committee at the Ngoye Lodge, in Limpopo, uh, will the asset-based community development model be able to deal with historic community challenges? And then how many projects has DBSA identified where the original project concepts and ideas by the communities were actually then changed by the department? Um, that's all for me so long. Thank you. Hola, Botlago. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, good morning. A very good morning to you and also all the members, delegation, whoever is in the platform. I greet you. Uh, Chairperson, let me first join the, my other colleague in welcoming the presentation. I also welcome the involvement of DBSA in this whole thing. I think they have involved people with expertise in the built environment. Since we once identified a challenge with the, which the department is responding to, the one of uh, them lacking capacity around the, 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 the building uh, expertise within Chaperson. My other take would be around uh, the involvement of this uh, DPSA, which I think it's a government entity also, but their involvement, how I wish it does not end with the project held over to the department and also to the communities. The social facilitation that they are are doing, are involved in there, must also assist the communities who are going to own at the end of the, of the, of the handover in a way of assisting or recommending them when they are making loans. I think we are dealing with a division here. I'm told it's the infrastructure uh, delivery division. But communities sometimes would like to access grants and loans within the bank itself. How I wish they can also assist when they see that or observe that uh, there's stability in the community, there's ownership, so that they can stand or write any recommendation on behalf of that uh, project when they want to make a loan within the bank. How I wish, Chairperson. My other question uh, would be around the what was explained by whoever in the in the delegation, because I had a, a question around the issue of retendering, uh, which was as a result of uh, treasury communications on prefer preferential procurement regulations, but that has been explained already. But Chair, uh, I also want to come closer to what was raised, raised by Honorable Winkler to say, now that DPSA has been contracted for a period of three years, I just want to draw the attention of the department to whatever delay that may, that may be there. I'm not saying anything, I'm not recommending anything as a parliamentarian, but I'm just drawing their attention to that with regards to timeframes 2020 to 2023. Because I observe that some of the projects are still at a design stage. That's why I'm drawing their, their attention to the timeframes and whatever. 
My other question, Chair, which I wanted to bring to the attention of this platform is the manner in which the, this agreement is serviced. You see, in the whole presentation, there are no financial costs or implications highlighted. Uh, and that's the area as people are doing oversight. We are interested in that angle. How is this agreement serviced? If it's a grant, we must be told. If it has got financial implications, we must be told. Let me also attach a question that says, are the funds transferred to DPSA? Who's paying who? I think that's the, that's the, that's the question. Out of the whole 78 projects that have been highlighted, what are the costs if that information is not ready now? I think the department must be ready to, to give us that information in future if it is not ready now. I, I, I know, I understand, it's not easy to, to, to answer a question that uh, needs the financial implications if they are not there in the presentation. The last one, Chairperson, would be the question that says, who is responsible for a project proposal, the design, the plans, who identifies, if I may ask, uh, the scope of work? I'm just interested in that. Who does what between the department and DPSA. Since we don't understand the cost now, we're unable to trap who is paid for what. Uh, if the scope of work is recommended at this, who recommends that? Uh, I'm also interested in getting a response around that matter, Chairperson, on the issue of financial costs and also the, the type of agreement that they have entered into with DPSA. I think they, the department has taken a, a right decision to involve them, Chairperson. The last one, the very last, uh, we were told during the presentation that there is a project that has been formally canceled, the Missy Resort. Can we get just is it because of financial whatever challenges or whatever? Why is the project or there was no uh, design, whatever that was not there? Why is there was the project formally cancelled whilst it was already included in the in the in the in the in the projects for whatever financial year? Those are my questions, Chair. Otherwise, I note the and, and welcome the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Member Treko. Um, I would like to hear from other members. I see on our register here, we have Honorable Sanganani Gumbi. Can you be the next one to come up with a question because I don't see hand. My hand I'm is there. also my hand is also up, Chair. Okay, please, please assist me with your hands uh, if you have raised it because my system I cannot be able to see the hands which are being raised. Is it Honourable um, Pusha who is raising the hand? Yes, Chair. And Honourable Tifreitas. Yes, sir, Chair. Okay, thank you very much uh, for making me aware. Uh, can I start with Honorable Mpushe and the Honorable Tifreitas will be the following one. Honorable Mpushe. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to the Honorable DM, the Honorable Members, uh, the Departmental Officials and the sub our support team, Chair. Uh, Chair, I, I also wish to welcome and, and, and appreciate the presentation, uh, Chair, and, and, and commend the department on, on the work done so far. Uh, Chair, my, my, my first question will be on the issue which has been raised by Honorable Talk. Uh, what is the total value of all the projects uh, to be implemented, uh, Chair? 
I'm also interested on, on the value of each cause in Gobe. I was, I was shocked by the 30 million uh, needed to refurbish uh, that, that project, Chair. Uh, secondly, Chair, given the fact that there are 78 projects which will be implemented uh, simultaneously, can DPSA give us assurance as to the fact that they have a requisite capacity to deliver on the memorandum of understanding, Chair. Uh, thirdly, Chair, is DBSA experiencing any internal supply chain management uh, capacity constraints, Chair? Or to rephrase it, Chairperson, uh, are there any other challenges that they are experiencing besides the, the treasury monitorium, Chairperson. Um, fourthly, Chair, given the challenges experienced by the communities at Ngobe Lodge uh, in Limpombo, Will the asset-based uh, community development model be able to deal with the historic community challenges as there are many uh, others like Ngobe in Limpombo? Uh, also on Ngobe, the department is saying, the DPSA is saying they are preparing for design development and, and design documentation, uh, which is work in progress, uh, Chair. Does that therefore mean that they have engaged the community on issues that they were they raised uh, during our visits, so that that community can have ownership uh, of that uh, project and the developments uh, done so far? Um, also, chair, is there? to the department now, uh, Honorable DM, is there an intention by the department to enhance in internal capacity um, so that they may be able to implement infrastructure project post DPSA MOU, Chairperson? Also, Chair, to emphasize on the issue that has been raised by Honorable Winkler on the issue that has to do with uh, consequence management on the contractors that did uh, that did not complete uh, their work. Uh, Honorable DM also, uh, so far, will you be able to share with the committee as to are there any improvements realized since uh, the MOU with the with DBSA? Another issue to the department on the treasury monitorium, has there been any engagement with treasury uh, given the fact that on the monitorium, there is an, a, an, a point raised by the treasury that the department has to appeal um, this. <laughs> That's that so far, Chairperson. Um, thanks. Thank you very much, Honorable Tifritas. Thanks, Madam Chair. I'm going to keep my camera off because I've uh, actually been uh, logged off a few times. So um, if I repeat some of the questions, please, uh, I apologize in advance because I've been, uh, my, my connection seems to be unstable. First of all, thank you to the presenters. It was a very concise, uh, both presentations were very concise and, and, and um, well received. Um, I won't repeat what questions have been asked already, but what I did want to ask is, um, how, uh, you know, there is, from what I can see, there's 78 different projects that are that are taking place simultaneously. Um, how is each um, project monitored and progress thereof to make sure that it's um, meeting deadlines uh, and and uh, doing what it should be doing? 
uh, is there a, a method of these are being monitored? And uh, with regard to the, I see that there must clearly be different service providers for each of these projects. I presume that's the case. Perhaps that could just be confirmed. Um, how are the service providers uh, chosen? Did each of the uh, different projects go out to tender? So that could just be explained a little bit more. Um, and then how were the projects identified, the actual projects? Because I noticed on the list, uh, there, are, there are things like game farms and lodges and so forth. So are these projects all um, owned by government or are they, do they involve private projects? And if that is the case, uh, how, why are we getting involved in private projects? So if that could be explained. And then I see that in the presentation, in my research and in the presentation today, I see the majority of projects are under the concept design phase, which means it's only at the beginning phase. And I know a little bit about construction and projects and so forth. And usually these things never run on time. There are always things that take place in the meantime. So if, if in fact, in June, that where we are now, we're on the concept design phase. Uh, will it be realistic that by the end of um, uh, the, the, the financial year in 2023, these projects would have been complete or is that not the intention? Will some projects be complete and others not and so forth? Um, and then uh, the, uh, if, if we could just hear a little bit more about the actual contracts themselves, are there penalty clauses that are included in the, in the uh, contracts? Uh, should um, contracts be overrun? Should they go over budget? Should they not meet deadlines and so forth? Thanks very much for your indulgence, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I yes, Honourable. Sorry, yes, my, my apologies, uh, Honourable Chair. There's just one thing that I forgot, Chair. There is MP Nisi, which was withdrawn, uh, Chairperson. I am I'm not sure I didn't get the reasons for the withdrawal, Chair. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um any other hand that is up, honorable members? Okay. Um can I hear Honorable Makubela? Can I hear from Honorable Makubela? Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my uh, question, uh, first, let me appreciate uh, the presentation on what entails the memorandum, memorandum of understanding between the department and uh, DBSA in terms of their project implementation. Uh, Honorable Chair, can we perhaps also get to understand how will uh, the funds and the resources for these projects be transferred or paid to the implementing agents? Uh, will the department be paying directly to uh, the implementers or they will be transferring uh, the budget all to DBSA and DBSA will be the one that re a uh, embassies uh, or allocates the the, the payments to uh, the contractors. Uh, then to DDG Shamil Shamila uh, uh, Chatia uh, is I've heard when you you mentioned that there are projects, it, 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 the projects where communities are involved and they take ownership of the projects, it's easy for the department to work with and to ensure that the state uh, of the infrastructure is kept uh, and maintained. But there are instances where uh, the communities or the beneficiaries do not want to take ownership like the uh, project we, we visited in our oversight uh, in Gove Lodge. And that tends to uh, bring in the issue of theft, vandalism, and dilapidation of 
uh, the current infrastructure. Can you share with us what are the systems that you have put in place to ensure that there is maximum community participation in the projects that you are implementing? Because it's, it's one thing to um, put resources uh, that we have limitation to of and which goes to waste because uh, if you look at that project, you've invested over about 30 million uh, to this date. But as the day go by, that 30 million is dilapidating uh, because there is no community uh, participation, there is no community handover, or the community does not want that project. So what are the systems that you have put in place to ensure that there is no repetition of such uh, instances uh, where our resources are, I can putly say uh, they are being uh, wasted, uh, especially in that, in that facility, because each and every day you have a deterioration of the infrastructure and that uh, talks to resources being, being wasted. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Makubele, Michelle. Um, can we hear from Honorable Pepani Muteka? Honorable Muteka, are you available? Okay, we hear no response from the member. Okay, and this is I'll come back to you, Honorable Mbushe. Honorable Defreitas, you have said your word. Honorable Sundi Samaneli. Honorable Maneli. Okay, Honorable um, Slanganani Kumbi. Okay, Honorable Members, I'm going to raise questions, but before, let me give the opportunity to Honorable Bushe. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. My apologies, okay. I'm reminded by Honorable Luciso on my question that I had on, with regards to the theft. Uh, is the department able to quantify the loss at Ngobe Lodge in terms of the items that were stolen, Chepesin, and what has been the progress in terms of uh, recovering some of them, or has there been uh, any one who has been charged uh, for that chair. Thanks. Thank you very much, Honorable um, Bushe. Uh, honorable members also coming to Ngove. I'm not sure if PPD, PPD falls, which we recently visited as the portfolio committee, uh, whether it forms part of these 78 projects, because it, it went so fast that we can't, we couldn't see some of the projects. Whether uh, PPD is on the um, on the project itself or it is not. So, honourable members. Um, also, the other question is: Was there any community um, involvement or not? Because it is, it seems like um, some of the projects happen without proper consultations with communities and they end up resisting to take um, responsibility of the same project of which the government has invested a lot of funds. Honorable members, my first question, my second question here is going to be about the, the overall expenditure which is envisaged to be spent to, to the same projects because um, we hear, I want to also support what Honorable Makubela had said. We hear about the 78 projects, but 
there is no specific money or funds which are mentioned here in, in the whole presentation, which, which we are supposed to be um, told about. So my worry is, honorable members, um, it means that there is a plan without budget in place, or if there is budget in place, it means the budget is actually not um, given to the honorable members and transparency thereof is not prevailing. Uh, honorable members also, um, you know, um, I'm happy that the, all the 78 infrastructures were flagged onto the presentation so that we can be able to to, to play our role as, as the portfolio committee in ensuring that whatever the presentation was presented today uh, is going to be implemented and, and also we can be able to play our oversight role in comparing the 78 project which were mentioned today onto the presentation. Uh, the, 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 the issue here is about the, the other issue here with me is about the handover. Uh, of your project, which is stage six of your project as we are outlining your, 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 your stages. Uh, the handover, the occupancy certificate, who is supposed to receive the, uh, the, the handover and the occupancy certificates coming to community projects? Uh, because sometimes we, uh, we see the loggerheads uh, or, or, or you see the, 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 the misunderstanding between the department and communities coming to the handing over of the project itself. Uh, and also it worries us to see, to say, it means if there is a challenge there, there will be also a challenge of maintenance plan going forward. It shows that the maintenance plan is not in place, hence the project is not even uh, the, the communities are not ready to receive the project and take over it. So it is important that the department also explains to us about the, the maintenance plans, since they can be able to tell us about the process of going forward in terms of implementing those projects. What is the status quo of the maintenance plans in particular to those community projects? Uh, honorable members, also my other question here is about the, the PPR uh, 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 remo removement. Because I heard that um, the, the 2017 projects where the DBSA was requested to remove those projects. I want DBSA or not even DBSA, the Department of of, 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 of tourism to explain to us as to why should the 2017 projects be removed from the plan itself? Because the, this is where we find a lot of challenges coming to uh, when we come to play our oversight role. Why specifically 2017 projects need to, uh, that, um, that uh, PPR that they said it must be removed? I, I really need um, the DG to uh, come to that one. And also wanting to know also, um, also the, 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 the reason why, you know, it is very, very much interesting to me to hear that. Uh, honorable members, coming to the audit, auditing of the, um, of the department uh, by the AG, who will be audited when coming to the to this budget that we are talking about, which is not uh, even um, explained to us or presented to us on how it's uh, how much is going to be spent on there or estimates that are going to be spent on there. So that the question is, who is going to be audited? Because right now we don't know who reports to who. Uh, that is that is a very very important uh, project um, uh, f uh, thing for us to understand. Um, honorable members, the other project here is about the project that fall under the Department of Arts and Culture. For instance, the museums. According to my understanding, museums fall to arts and culture, and there have been a mention of the fact that museums will also be 
under the same construction work that is going to be done. Who is paying for this vote? Because this vote belongs to arts and culture. Or is there, was there uh, any discussion between art and culture to, to say, this is DB, here is DBSA and this is your portion are going to, to spend on the um, reconstruction of or, or uh, renovating all these museums uh, so that we don't confuse the votes and, 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 and the budgets of each department. Hence, I, I was asking you, is the AG going to, who is the AG going to, 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 to audit between the Department of Tourism, the Department of Arts and Culture, as well as the same DBSA, who is going to be audited there with when coming to this project? And if there is any pro problem and challenge in terms of expenditures here or implementation, who are we going to hold responsible in terms of the, the accountability? Uh, uh, uh. Yes, I think this is, those are the, the questions that um, I really wanted to ask honorable members and officials. Can I, um, can I give the opportunity to the department and the DBSA to respond to the questions as per the members' questions? Thank you very much. Over to you, uh, the Department um, of, um, of Tourism first, then DBSA later. No, no, th 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 thanks, Chair. Uh, maybe what we, we, we have to do uh, is just firstly to, 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 uh, to just just give some few clarity before uh, we go into the details, uh, especially as it relates to, to the financial part. Uh, you will recall, Chair, that we, we are presenting, we're making this presentation on the basis of the 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 request that has been sent uh, to ourselves by the committee and the committee was very specific uh, on what is it that we must report upon uh, and therefore we we were responding the presentation was responding to what the correspondence was saying, which correspondence excluded the financial implications. You will recall, Chair, that few last month, we presented the annual performance plan, the APP, of which the APP has got all the 78 projects. A, with the budget allocation into it. Therefore, it has been our understanding that the, the, the portfolio committee uh, went through this APP and we had a debate around that. Uh, and finally, uh, we, uh, we, we then, uh, and our understanding is that the all the information on the financial part in the context of the APP, it's available and it's in the hands of the portfolio committee on the basis of the annual performance plans that were present because these projects are not project outside the APP. They are project that has been presented into the APP and the portfolio committee has agreed on those projects in the APP. Uh, and therefore, if, if, if there is a need, to, uh, my understanding is that on a quarterly basis, uh, will then come to the portfolio committee to give progress 
of which that progress will then indicate what are the milestone we'll be making in each project in terms of the implementation. Uh, so, so that we, we are able then to be held accountable on, 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 on what on, 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 on the progress that we're making. The second issue, Chair, that we, we just have to clarify is that uh, we've categorized the project as some of them are historical projects, dating back to as far as uh, when the department was combined with environmental affairs and tourism. And we did explain the historical challenges uh, uh, around this pro that, those projects, uh, of which some of them in, some, in, in one portfolio committee meeting we explained that at some point, some of the project when investigation was done through the GTEC, it was discovered to be not desirable because the manner in which they were conceptualized, no due process was undertaken. And therefore those projects are not feasible. Some of them were, were, were feasible for something else that is not tourism related. And we did explain in our, uh, in, in one of the, the, the presentation, uh, I, I don't remember what it was late last year or early this year, when we're presenting some of these projects, uh, the historical one and the challenges thereof, and then the new approach that we are taking uh, to try and address the historical challenges uh, that, 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 that we inherited uh, so that we're able to resolve it. I thought I must I must just start there before I then hand over to 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 the DBSA. Let's start with the DBSA to to to, to then to respond on the issue that relates direct to them, and then so that we then sum up from the department side, so that we then close whatsoever gaps the DBSA because we are the we are the owners of the projects. We are, we are the ones that are accountable to the project were the one that presented the project to parliament and the budget that has been, that is going to be approved by parliament is budget that is allocated in the department, not in TBSA. So it will be prudent that we, we allow TBSA to deal with issues that directly relate to them. And then we'll then come at the end and, and, and then close everything that it might be outstanding that will require us to close that gap that the DBS aid might have omitted, but also deal with the issues that directly uh, requires us as a department to deal with. Can we can we can we agree Chair, to to take it like that? Yes, I do agree, um, Honourable um, Masalela, Deputy Minister. I do agree. Can we move to the DBS aid then, uh, Honourable Members? DBS aid. Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, um, thank you. I am going to just try and address some of the questions that I picked up as we were going along that uh, DBSA can assist with. I think one of the questions dealt with consequence management, um, contractors failing to complete the work. So in, in all contracts that the DBSA forms with um, contractors, we always have penalty clauses that are instituted in, in, in the contract. Should a contractor fail to complete on the dates that has been given, there is a monetary um, penalty that is stipulated. Also, should a contractor um, be failing to implement the works accordingly to the scope, what we normally have, we have before they can commence with the works, a guarantee which they need to submit um, upfront. So they submit a 10% guarantee, which um, is kept for situations or scenarios whereby we will find ourselves having issues with contractors not completing the works or running away 
we always have a way in which we can recover or recoup those funds and utilize them to complete the works with completing contractors. There's also a portion in their invoices where every month is deducted from their claim in which they submit. So there's a retention amount, which is also kept aside. So we have the retention, we have the guarantee, and we also have penalty clauses that are stipulated in the contracts. Um, I hope that question is covered. Um, and then in the involvement of DBSA, in terms of um, the projects where we found that DBSA, um, where there were changes from what the community wanted, I think that has already been covered. Um, we were only engaged to try and deal with the specific scope, which we, as we continue um, implementing the works, our team does get to sit down with the end users, which is the community and also the different facilities like the reserves. And most of the scope is not going to be implemented without discussions with them. So some of the discussions are ongoing and some of the needs or the ones that the communities are imposing, we do sit down with tourism and we engage about them. Some as explained are not feasible for tourism. There are situations whereby we are requested to put in things that will not help facilities in, in the near future and that are really costly in terms of trying to ensure that we rehabilitate those different facilities. With regards to the timeframes between the DBSA, MOU and uh, MOA and um, NDT, I think um, NDT will assist in terms of that, but I know that in the MOA, there was a clause which was stipulated that an extension can be granted between the two, depending on communications as we continue. We are going to have projects that are multi-year, but most of the projects that we are looking at are possibly projects that could fit in within six to eight months. And we also have maintenance projects, which could be about three months. And the bulk of the projects that we have, which are about 40 are maintenance projects. So as we continue, um, depending on the outlook of where we are, there might be an extension, depending on the conversations or talks that DBSA and NDT will continue having. For assurance in terms of delivery of all the projects, to date, DBSA can assure that all these projects will be implemented accordingly as per the scope that will be concluded and signed um, between the two parties, DBSA and NDT. I think with that, we are putting our resources totally on the works that needs to be employed. And in as much as we have 78 projects, DBSA um, has contacted professional service providers that are going to be assisting with the managing and also the implementation of these projects. The appointment of this seven um, service providers was done through tendering processes, and we have appointed them accordingly to um, the procurement policies. I'm trying to recall if there are any other questions that have to deal with DBSA. Uh, the one with capacity. Yes, um, the one with capacity, DBSA does have the capacity. And this is where we also have the services that we have procured from the professional service providers to assist and also add on to the internal capacity that DBSA has. So we have drawn in the pool for the pro professional service providers that are going to be assisting us in the implementation of this project. Um, all right, I think DBSA may, may think that they have completed the question, but before we, we hear from the Department of, of, um, of Tourism, I still, uh, honorable members, have a, a very serious concern here with regards to the AG 
um, audits. Because if the, the, the trench will go to DBSA to implement, how do we actually monitor the procurement? Because it is our duty to ensure that we see how the state funds are being uh, are utilized and whether policies and strategies and plans were implemented according to the government's regulations. So my question here, honorable members, is if DBSA is, is not going to account to the department, to, 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 to the portfolio committee, uh, and, but account to the department, maybe if we can get assurance that we will also have the insight of the, as the portfolio committee, the insight of the, of the audit that will have been done into DBSA when they were implementing the procurement processes, including the implementation of the, uh, the, the spending of the budget, which was sent by the same department. So I, I, I still feel that it cannot be a question that can be answered on the lighter note. Here we're talking about money that is going to be spent on the behalf of the department by DBSA, of which I think we must have an insight on how that those funds are going to be spent and processes which are going to be followed and not floated processes. So I'm very, very much worried, uh, um, DM, uh, on the fact that the, the question was responded to on a very lighter note. Thank you, Honorable. Before we pass there, I would like to hear the department and the DBSA coming to that because it is both departments now that must account on the funds, on how they were, fund, they were used. Thank you very much. I would like to hear more from the minister before, um, no, from the DBSA before it, uh, it, it goes off the stage, but uh, also ensure us about how are we going to also know how their funds were spent by DBSA because those are the Department of Tourism funds. Thank you, uh, DBSA. Please, before you, you give to the department, can you respond also? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think one thing that I have to outline, um, the DBSA is also part of government. We are still guided by the PFMA, triple PFA, and all other regulations. Um, DBSA is also audited by AG. Um, even if we do implement works with other departments, we also have auditors, um, AG coming through and audit the work that we have done. We are also open to any auditing or any um, questions that could come our way. We are available always together with the department to assist whenever we are called upon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, maybe maybe chair to come in. Let's let's try just to to to, to, to clear the the fear, chair, uh, that you might have. Um, well, you will know that um, DBSA is, is reflected as a government agent. It's not a private sector. And we, we've, we've, we've appointed a, a DBSA as an implementing agent. It's a normal thing that happens in government. If you take, for example, police stations and courts and what, what they're not built by the South African police or, they are not, or the, the, the courts are not built by justice or the, the correctional facilities are not built by correctional services. They, there's an implementing agent, which is public works, but the budget is not with public works. The budget is with the department's concern. A, and then public works becomes the implementing agent. 
So similar to our situation, a DBSA is an implementing agent, implementing project on our behalf. And because it's a government entity, it, it follows the same process that public works does uh, in terms of the, 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 the requirements of the PFMA, treasurer regulations and all others. So they are all governed by the same principle. Uh, the, the only difference is that they've got capacity which you don't have, they've got engineers which you don't have. Uh, and therefore, th that's why they, they've got that capacity to then implement the project. And that's why the, the recommendation from the GTEC and also from the AG that uh, we need to get an agent to implement this project on our behalf. And therefore, DBSA became one of the relevant uh, agencies that are available in the state that we, 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 we then decided to use among the many that are there that uh, have got capacity to implement projects. So, 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 so accountability remains with the department because it's the department at the end that must account on, on, the imp, on the success and the failures, the department must take responsibility on the, uh, on the failures and the success of the implementation of the project by the agents that we've appointed ourselves. So we've got the, an overall responsibility to make sure that the DBSA performed as it is required. You will recall that in the presentation by TDG Cheetah is that there is a system that we have put in place. Uh, and when DBSA was presenting, the procurement process is stated to explain how is it going to be done and the role that the department will be playing in, will be playing in making sure that uh, there, is no, there, is no, there is no procurement that is going to take place without the department agreeing, taking into consideration whether all the necessary policies that are required uh, is, 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 is met. Uh, and, and the reason why, therefore, uh, we, 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 we are responsible to make sure that all the transformative agendas and all other related inclusivity, community involvement and participations are taken into consideration that's why we've got that team that is responsible to make sure that uh, that is adhered to, and and therefore we don't falter into that. So 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 the committee should be assured that, it, that there's nothing uh, that is that we you are not going to be, uh, uh, I mean, informed of if you need any information. That information will always be made available at whatever given point in time that you might require it uh, from, from our side uh, 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 with the agent of, of that you have appointed to this DBSA. Maybe can I hand over to DG and DD Chaito to deal with the outstanding questions before we come to us to the, to the, back to the comment. Uh, 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 Honorable uh, Masalel, uh, DM, I don't know uh, who is going to respond to the issue of why the 2017 project had to be um, to be removed. No, the department will deal with that too. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, yeah. we can hand over to the department to, to answer all the outstanding questions. There's still a lot of them that are not responded to. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> Honorable Chairperson. Thank you to the Deputy Minister. Um, Honorable Chairperson, I have been exchanging messages with uh, the DDG. We are not sure which projects um, are projects of reference when it comes to the 2017. Uh, we would like just to get that clarity so that when we, we, we provide the response, then at least we know specifically which projects are we talking about. We, 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 we try to look at 
which projects that could be, we didn't find them. Uh, uh, this is reference to 2017 projects. Uh, I don't know whether Oracle Chairperson would like to, to, to first uh, uh, guide us on that, and then we, we can then uh, provide the, the, the remainder of the response. Yes, I do. Um, the question here, I'm raising it because of the, the uh, presentation by the DPSA, where Mr. Tulani Mumado mentioned the fact that uh, the um, department requested him not to include the 2017 uh, people, uh, also, also remove them from the PPR. Um, so I want to understand the reason, and maybe he can rephrase and repeat himself, then you can be able to respond to his question. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, DBSA, please come back to the issue of the PPR of 2017 project, which were requested to remove them from the DBSA plan that is supposed to be implemented. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I think uh, I'll just go back to that part. That part was dealing with the preferential procurement regulations of 2017. So DBSA had requested um, National Treasury for an exemption when they had sent out the moratorium to suspend works, the moratorium to suspend all, all tenders. DBSA requested National Treasury if they can be exempted and continue um, with tender processes. We received approval as DBSA, but that approval had conditions whereby we were told to remove all the PPR of 2017, the preferential procurement regulations of 2017. However, the new correspondence that has come sometime last week, if I'm not mistaken, that was issued has advised that all the PPR of 2017 are valid and must be included in all tenders going out. So I think that is where we must have missed each other, man. It was in regards to the preferential procurement regulations. Oh, thank you. So the, those projects are part of the 1778 projects? No. Yeah, it's the regulations from National uh, Treasury. No. no, it's not the project, uh, it's, it's the, the regulation. It's yes, the regulation yeah. okay. that was set aside by the court in February, of which a uh, which is a preference procurement, uh, which was the 2017 uh, regulation, of which uh, the Treasurer communicated that uh, because of that outcome of the court, then uh, then everything must not be, no procurement must proceed in the context of the 2017 regulation of which unfortunately okay. it was a misinterpretation of treasurer of the court. Then the court came back and said, no, no, no. We didn't say stop procurement. We, so that's why then treasurer last week has then to reissue another correction to say, no, proceed with the regulation as it was for 20, of 2017, uh, 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 until further notice, so there's another process. But the, that, that's, that, that's the regulation, not the projects. No, thank you very much. It's well understood. You know, some of the things we'll understand them when the committee is sitting, because we, we need to get some of the information in advance so that as the committee we are brought into confidence and as we go, we flow easily together with you. Thank you very much for the explanation and I hope the committee members have also received the same information. Yes, uh, we can hear from, can we hear from the department going forward? Thank you, respondent. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Jefferson. <clears throat> Um, for that clarity as well, um, the, I will I will deal with some some of the the the, the, 
the, the clarity uh, matters as well. And then the DDG will also come in on some of the more detailed technical issues. The, the provision in the in the in the in the contract that we've got with uh, with with DBSA uh, for us to be uh, get into an extended uh, period for the contract was uh, in anticipation. So when we negotiated that with National Treasury, it was in anticipation that uh, projects can face uh, various challenges in the process of execution. And uh, from time to time, you've got to actually make sure that you, you, you have made provision for that. I, I will not deal, uh, Honorable Chairperson, with uh, the, 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 I think the issue around uh, the audit has been adequately addressed, but suffice to say um, that we get audited on all these projects. Uh, and when that audit is undertaken, uh, and any other project that we may be doing with others, uh, whether it is uh, those that we may have appointed for skills projects or for this type of project, we, we get audited on that. And the AG also goes as far as looking at the practices of the particular agent that we would have appointed and whether that particular agent is actually living up to the requirements uh, of uh, 38J, particularly where transfers are concerned uh, of the PFME, which requires that we should have applied ourselves to be able to see that there is all these uh, requirements in terms of their own systems, their own processes, and their ability to, to, be, to be able to, to, to uh, handle the money uh, in the manner that we would have wanted it to be handled in terms of uh, the legal requirements. The other aspect, so, so we have got that from, from DBSA to say, well, this is how we do this and so on. The other aspect that is linked to that relates to the issue of how do we monitor um, this, this progress and so on. Uh, and when DDG was uh, presenting one of the things that she alluded to, was the existence of the technical committee that meets uh, on a fortnight basis. And that particular uh, committee then feeds to a committee that meets on a monthly basis, which I chair. Um, and that particular committee goes through all these things. On the side, DBSA is actually finalizing a system which will allow the department to be able to have um, a real-time data on the projects on the ground. And that would then uh, be uh, having more of uh, uploaded information about the site and so on, uh, where we are with regards to the specific contract payments and all those other things. On the, on the issues of budgets, I do want to indicate that uh, this is a commercial uh, agreement between uh, DBSA and, uh, and the department. And of course, they do it for a fee. And their fee, uh, we will then uh, make sure that uh, it is, is paid over to them with regards to the specific part of them being the ones that are doing this particular work uh, in terms of managing all these projects. Um, and, and, and that particular fee, uh, is, is, it depends on the size of a project. So if you've got a smaller project, the fee will be higher. If you've got a bigger project, the fee will be lower percentage wise. Uh, and, and it ranges from 6.5% all the way to 9% uh, of, of the project value. But on that sliding scale that I've just explained, um, I can also confirm that based on the previous, uh, on the previous uh, trends that we saw with the other projects and so on, uh, that, that uh, actually did not necessarily succeed. Um, this fee is actually uh, lower uh, compar comparatively uh, when you look at uh, what we actually charge some of the projects. Uh, the other area, there was a question about NISI project. NISI project, yes, it was in our books and it is a project that uh, uh, we had made a full commitment uh, to conclude. In that particular process, uh, 
there was a parallel process where the community um, then decided to engage with uh, a, a, a private, let me call it a private company, with a private company uh, so that they could actually be, be some sort of uh, a joint venture uh, between them. Now, the minute it becomes a joint venture that has got a, a private content, uh, that 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 uh, does not enable us to go and build a property and give it in the hands of a private company. However, the purpose of that was for them to be able to approach a commercial bank, uh, the, 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 the development finance institutes, um, for them to be able to fund the completion of that particular project uh, based on the fact that there was uh, money that is coming from the, 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 other, the other party. And they were able to secure uh, those funds. And as we speak, it is not like the project has stopped. The project is actually a proceeding and it's actually going to become concluded soon, uh, but not necessarily by the department. I think that is important. What they opted to do was that they would take the property that was on site and they will finish on that particular property. So we've done the necessary paperwork for the handover of this and so on. However, we were still very, very much uh, prepared to continue with the community and make sure that we finish that part which we had actually started. But because the community was saying they are not gonna go ahead uh, without their private partner, and our rules don't allow us to actually give money to private individuals for them to actually benefit in this regard. So I thought, uh, let's, let's also clarify that part. The identification of the projects, DM has already alluded to the fact that by and large, most of these projects come from uh, the historical perspective, but the projects are actually identified in collaboration with the provinces. So in all these instances, uh, just now when we're dealing with uh, uh, tourism in Daba, uh, somewhat a similar report that you have received today, honorable members, was also shared with the MinMEC. So we keep them posted, they, but in the identification, they're actually part of that. But we also have to go through uh, intense negotiations and discussions with them. Uh, and in some instances with the communities, I've gone to most of these particular communities to discuss some of these particular projects with them. Because there are some instances where you find that the requests that are being made may not necessarily be fulfilled from a financial point of view. And that's where we have got to do a whole lot more development facilitation to make sure that at the end of the day, we are able to, to find one another, if I could actually put it in, in that way. We also have a lot of pressure, honorable members, a lot of pressure coming I mean, just this week, I received a letter from a municipal manager who says um, the, 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 the community is saying to that municipal manager, uh, they want to know specifically how much is the particular project going to cost. Now, that's a very strange request because in our own engagements with the communities, we've clarified those issues to say, we can't tell you the exact amount of money because that would circumvent the whole process of bidding. And we may actually even end up losing on possibilities of closing some of these particular uh, uh, bids at, at a reason, far reasonable uh, price uh, uh, than, than what, what ultimately becomes of something that someone already knew that the price tag is 50 million, the price tag is 5 million, the price tag is 20 million. So we try and protect that information because the minute that information goes into the public, the whole process of actually going through a competitive bidding no longer actually makes, uh, you know, it, it doesn't, the value of it is actually diluted because of that. So that is why we, 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 we often would not go into individual project specific details about the, 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 the the, the specificity of the, the, the budgets and so on. Once we go there, then it means we have actually given away 
the most crucial part of information for those that are in the business of actually tendering for these things and actually wanting to come on board. And that, that on our part would be a little bit of a, a misconduct if we were to go that route because then others are being advantaged over others in a process which is supposed to be a process of proper open bid. And we should then be able to also have the, the leeway to be able to negotiate for, for, for better for better for better prices ultimately. Uh, PPD is indeed the yes, part of these projects uh, that 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 are your honourable chairperson. Um, I will leave the questions pertinent to Tungobe to the DDG. She was on site with the honourable members um, about uh, some of the issues that have been raised uh, regarding regarding the, the 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 theft and so on. And I think she will be able to to deal with some of those. Um, there, are, there are issues, and DDG will also speak to this, there are some of the issues that we're looking into with regards to the, the whole issue of uh, how do we get to sustainability? Uh, and, and I would want to just uh, highlight here to the honorable members that in some instances, previously we have experienced problems with uh, cases where you would find that the beneficiaries, we take them through an assisted process of uh, securing services of uh, someone who's going to be able to, to run the facility once it has actually been completed on behalf of that particular community. And you then find that uh, in the process, the community wants uh, sorted so. Um, not, not the process that is actually going to yield uh, the person, but they want so and so to be the person that must actually get into this thing. Now, once that happens, government can no longer get involved because you, 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 you're being dragged into uh, a, basically ignoring uh, the due processes and so on and having to go and pick somebody uh, and say this will be the person and so on. So those are some of the issues that uh, come in in terms of issues of facilitation and so on. But I think Dirigi will also speak to some of the things that we are going to do to be able to, to overcome those. Um, all of these projects, which are person with regards to the, to the issue about uh, are they uh, in part arts and culture? And so all of these projects are in the context of making sure that we deal with destination development. Arts and culture as a policy department uh, has pronounced already that one of the things that they are pursuing, I'm gonna use this as an example, one of the things that they are pursuing is um, development of the liberation heritage route. But development of these routes um, in part is our direct responsibility. And when we say that we are going to be looking at the McGregor Museum as an example, uh, the, the Amazon B area in, in, in KZ and uh, Drakensberg. So, so when we look at that and we say, okay, what then happens? We, we then look back and say, what were the numbers that were actually coming into this particular place? And that museum being uh, under that, that, uh, that, that, that community, what, what were the numbers that were coming into this place? What were they coming here for and so on? And we found that there's a lot of traffic that was going there on the basis that this had a, a very uh, historical place in the history of uh, the, 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 the British people as well as uh, the Zulu people. And in that particular environment, you would find that a lot of people that were coming from uh, uh, the UK would then want to also make that part of their, their itinerary, uh, including the battlefields and so on. So it's in our best interest, it's in our best interest to make sure that such iconic um, uh, uh, products that, that, uh, that, that are serving as some of the best attractions that we've got, we need to make sure that this good upkeep and so on. And, and that's why we have actually included this. And this is why, as DM said, was actually part of our our, 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 our budget, our budget vote uh, proposals. And then the, 
Uh, let me give Honorable Chairperson to, to DDG for now, and then and then she she's going to take us through some of the the, the, the other aspects that have actually been raised by the Honorable Chairperson. Um, Shamila. Uh, thank you, DG, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. I think the DG has covered a, a lot of the questions, but I think there's a very specific question about how we work with communities, um, and and what we're doing to ensure that there is ownership by communities of these projects uh, once the project is completed. So when a project is initiated, it is essentially not the department's idea, um, as the DG and DM have indicated. Many of these projects are, of course, historical. And for all of them, those are ideas that have been put forward and what we're currently implementing are in fact the ideas of the community, um, not ideas that have been imposed upon them. Um, as the DG also indicated, the projects that have been submitted uh, to then the Department of Environmental Affairs, now the Department of Tourism, actually have also got the involvement of the province um, in, in working with the communities. So every project has a project steering committee. The community is a central part of that steering committee. But what the department also does then is to bring on board uh, all of the, the levels of government, provincial and local government, to make sure that those um, departments that are necessary and important for the success of the project are involved in the project steering committee. The project steering committee then, of course, also is comprised of representatives from the department, as well as the DBSA team, and then the contractor or the professional services team. And those um, uh, committees basically meet on a monthly basis or more frequently, depending on the stage of the project. So where there are discussions, consultations, et cetera, there's obviously more frequent meetings, but once the project actually commences, the meetings happen then on, 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 a, on a monthly basis to monitor the progress in line with what is, is needed to take place. There are two elements to the work that that uh, project steering committee does. The one is to actually monitor the actual construction of the project, to actually understand that that is on track and in line with what has been discussed and negotiated. But the second part of the process that that project steering committee actually looks at is the long-term sustainability of the project and, and how we work together with um, the, the, the owning entity, but also with other agencies um, that might be able to assist us to bring on board the skills that we require. So let me give you a practical example. We're working on projects in KwaZulu Natal. Um, in terms of that, we have an owning entity, which is a community that uh, runs a particular, owns a particular project. And we're working in that instance with, uh, with the uh, tourism uh, investment KwaZulu Natal. What we have then done in that project is to actually work with the community to bring on board uh, legal support so that we ensure that the trust is properly constituted, that they have a, a proper constitution and how the project will run beyond the completion of that project is very clearly articulated. We then support that community to actually um, run their elections, uh, for example, of the, of the trust um, um, that, that will manage the project. And we, we are also then supporting that community to look at how they then run long-term operations. Where required, either Tourism KZN or ourselves brings in support from other entities, whether that is support in terms of training, um, whether that is then support in terms of securing an operator, and whether that is then in terms of support in terms of long-term governance um, uh, processes, that is how we actually run the project. Um, each project, of course, is unique um, in and of itself. 
because only entities have their own preferences as the DG has indicated. And as government, um, we must run transparent and open processes. So in some instances, owning entities then prefer to run processes themselves because they have in their own minds um, a particular uh, operator that they might want to work with. And we allow owning entities then to, to uh, determine and dictate um, how and what is the nature of support that they require from the department uh, in terms of either governance, training, or long-term sustainability. So for each project, there is a team that will work on long-term sustainability, working very closely with the professional services team, but also working very closely with the community that is the uh, delegated and, and, and owning entity. Within that process of long-term sustainability, we also look at both the operational funding and the long-term maintenance so that once we hand over projects, it is very clear to the owning entity what responsibilities they are taking on uh, when those projects are handed over to them. But I think it's really important to stress uh, because I've heard it uh, said a few times, the department doesn't impose any of these concepts on communities. These ideas um, for projects came from communities and we work very closely then to support those communities to realize those. But within that process, it's a negotiated process because what the department would like to leave is projects like the PD that are operational and very well run um, and do not become a burden on any community. Um, and, and so that's the process that we follow, working very closely uh, with communities and negotiating each step of the way. Um, I, I would also like to say that we don't always necessarily agree uh, with each other, but I think that the, the portfolio committee and your oversight visits will see that there is a very healthy relationship between the department and communities because it's one based on honesty um, and, 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 and on, on trust and on open communication. With regards to the Ngobe project itself, I think the, the, um, it is correct. On that project, there has been vandalism. Um, in all instances where there is vandalism, those cases are reported uh, to the police. Um, a, a docket is then opened and, and we allow then the, the, the SAPs to run the process of investigating uh, what they need to investigate uh, in terms of, of the theft itself. Um, and we allow those legal uh, processes then to take their course. Um, in terms of quantifying uh, what, would, you know, what would have been uh, taken, all of that would then have been uh, provided in the actual uh, case report uh, that is made. And as a department, we then have a record uh, of, of all of the, the, the case numbers. Um, and you know, we, we, we do from time to time uh, get feedback on, on, on whether there's been progress with those matters. But that then becomes a, a matter that is for law enforcement uh, to deal with. Um, and, and I think that with the Ngobe project, it, it is um, an unfortunate uh, circumstance. Um, I think honorable members with the Ngobe project, it's also important to say that when uh, HOSI provides feedback um, on the history of the particular project, he did in his feedback indicate that initially the community had hoped to um, have a project that was up in the mountains. But what they did realize once the, the uh, more detailed planning uh, had commenced was that if they were to continue with the project in the mountains, uh, it would cost a lot of money in terms of bulk services and completion of the geotechnical work. And it was the community then that decided uh, to move that project to where it is currently located on the basis of the realization that the funding that was provided 
way back, I think, if I recall correctly, he said uh, in 2003, um, it was upon the realization that that funding would not be able to support the project as they had initially hoped to have it up in the mountains. And that was the reason that they moved that project down to the, to the current site. So I think that it's important um, to state that the, the, even, the, even with the Ngobe project, the project as it is currently conceptualized was not something that was forced upon the community, neither its location nor its, its current design. And as the DG has indicated, the DG himself has been there. Uh, I have been there uh, together with the DG, uh, together with the, with the previous DDG, um, and, and we do engage with the communities uh, in, uh, in that open way. Um, I think the, the other question was then related to um, specifically our contract with the DBSA and whether we would be able to actually complete the projects that we have presented, um, um, despite the, the fact that the, the contract itself, its initial period comes to an end in 2023. What I'm happy to say is that the framework contract does allow us to complete all of these projects, um, as we have indicated, all of the projects that uh, have been presented do in fact have funding, so uh, none of them are an unfunded uh, mandate in any way, shape or form. Um, and um, we, we will, of course, where necessary, um, as the DG indicated, if there is a requirement to extend it, um, do so in order to ensure that all of the projects that have been covered uh, in this presentation are in fact um, completed. Um, of course, our involvement with the projects don't just end once the construction is completed. We do then support uh, the projects in terms of their individual sustainability plans uh, to make sure that they are operational um, and, um, and, and run uh, correctly. Um, I believe, DG, that I then have covered uh, any of the remaining uh, projects um, unless there are any other matters that I've left behind. But I do want to say a small thing about the maintenance program that the DBSA is also rolling out for us. Honorable members will recall that we have completed the tourism sector recovery plan um, um, in, uh, in, in the kind of uh, you know, wave uh, following the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the elements of work in that um, tourism sector recovery plan was the protection of tourism supply. Um, and this is where the maintenance of uh, particularly state-owned assets has come into play. Uh, we're running two projects, uh, as we've reported in terms of our APP. The one is the maintenance in national parks. That has been run by Sand Parks, uh, because all of those projects are, of course, in national parks. And the provincial maintenance program, which is provincially owned assets, is the project that the DBSA is helping us uh, roll out. But that is as part of our APP, as DM has indicated, and part of the tourism sector recovery plan uh, that is looking at the protection of our tourism supply. I'm going to stop there, DG, um, uh, DM, uh, and honorable chair and honorable members. I hope that I have covered the, the remainder of the matters that uh, needed to be covered. Thank you, DG. Thank you, Shamila. Honorable Chairperson, just one thing that we had not spoken to is uh, whether we are intending to create capacity going forward. And I think the other one would be um, the current status and challenges and so on in relation to procurement. Uh, I think that was raised by Honorable Mpushe. The, the, the procurement issues are no longer a challenge. I think that's important just to state in that we, we now are back to uh, the original uh, before, before there was a, there was a, there was a, uh, the, the order of the court, um, uh, and and we'll then be able to deal with those uh, issues uh, from the side of uh, DBSA. The capacity issues, part of what we have provided from the framework agreement, is that 
there will be skills transfer. Uh, of course, honorable members, there are those skills that uh, can be transferred, but there are those skills that uh, would would not come uh, easily. Um, so, so uh, the the colleagues will have uh, the ability to monitor projects. They will have the ability to 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 follow through on 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 commitments in the project plans and so on to manage contracts and all those kinds of things. But but we can't convert them to become engineers. Um, so so we will still need that sort of capacity uh, even in the future. What we are unlikely going to be able to have is resources to keep professional engineers on our payroll. So those kinds of expertise from time to time as and when they are required will then be in a position to go and source such. Uh, honorable Chairperson, thank you very much for the over to you. Um, uh, no, no, before that, maybe there's one issue said, uh, DG it has been asked by Honorable Macubel on the payment. Uh, I'm not sure why I missed it. I don't, I don't remember somebody responding on how the, the payment to the contractors being done is it through to BSA or direct into the, by the department that was asked by Macubel. Did you? Thank you, thank you, Tim. They, 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 thank, thank you, Honorable Tim. They, they, there are two aspects, Tim, to that, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, there was a part that was responded to by, 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 by Tulani, which, which basically is that the, the overall management of the project, they then make the payment to third parties. So you did mention aspects such as when they make the payment there's a certain percentage that is uh, retained um, so there's a retention aspect just to manage our risks there's also guarantees that uh, they are expected to also uh, uh, have which also assist with the management of uh, those risks but the the payment of all the third parties that are actually doing the real work uh, on the ground or the design so whatever it may be it's actually done through DBSA. We made this framework agreement such that it allows us to do the transfers to DBSA, and then DBSA then gives us a full account. But before any appointment is done on the other side, SDM had mentioned earlier, there's a, a concurrence that is sought from our side to look at whether all the necessary processes have actually been followed. But the final payment in terms of third parties who are doing the work is done through DBSA. And we, on the other side, make our payment to DBSA. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Um, I still have one clarity sticking, not even one, one clarity sticking question. With regard, with regard to the spending of um, the project uh, funds to uh, for the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, because remember each and every department has its own budget vote. And I'm still going back to the same question because the clarity was not actually convincing to say, yes, we do believe that tourists go to those museums but who is supposed to spend money onto the art and culture museums? Uh, because that, that shows that, or, or did you seek for any, or is there any memorandum of understanding between your, depa uh, your department, which is tourism department, and the, to the, the, the sports art and culture department in ensuring that uh, whatever you are going to spend that belongs to, to, your, to, your, to, to the department of ag agriculture, uh, sort of tourism um, uh, in terms of the budget and spending it on, on the projects that belong to the arts, sports, arts and culture. You know, the, it's actually, you, you explain the, the interest, which I, I, I also want to uh, understand more in terms of spending on their behalf, or was there any, um, con uh, what you call it, the permission that you received from the treasury to 
to, 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 to assist the Department of Art and Culture since we have a vested interest as the tourism department to ensure that those facilities are, are actually acceptable in front of the eyes of the tourists. So it, it, is, it can be simple in ensuring that you want to see a better um, destination development, but coming to the expenditure tactics, you find that there are areas where we go wrong because we think that we are doing good while uh, according to the uh, PFMA, uh, you are actually uh, uh, in, in tempering into the budget of the sister sister uh, portfolio committee. So that that is also very very important. And the other question, which I think was not uh, responded to here, is Honourable Defreitas' question that is talking about: Is it private project or is it a government projects? Which money is spent? Are they all government or personal projects? Because he also raised issues of guest houses and other things. So I don't think he was responded to there. And also um, the consequence management that Honourable Mpushe raised in terms of the consequence management of, of, of those um, monies that were not, or is it of the projects that were not properly implemented? I'm not sure if I'm quoting her correctly. Um, yes, um, also the assurance that the financial year that we spent, you, you spoke about here, or the duration of the contract, which was signed between DBSA and the department, it's, it's always showing that it should be ending at 2023 with all the projects going concurrently. So um, the worry is, were you realistic in terms of the term where you think that the, the project will have been completed by the time? And um, we know that it, you, you said it's going to be a renewed, um, the contract may be renewed, but the worry is why do you start with the project um, ending period that is not realistic. If it is not realistic, can you can you mention that to us as to why you're convincing us to say they will be done by 2023? Thank you. No, Thank no, you. No. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Yeah. Um, maybe let, let, let's, 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 let's start by saying, Chair, yeah, uh, the... Well, well, most of the questions that you you, you, are, you are you are raising, uh, to some extent, uh, there was a, an attempt to deal with them. It might not have been satisfactory, uh, except the one for for the freighters, uh, which 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 was not properly uh, responded in terms of ownership, though it was partially. Because honorable we, defreitas, because, honorable defreitas DM. Because, because we're indicating that the honorable defreitas, yes. Because we're indicating that uh, mo the projects are community projects. Um, so so we don't, there's no single project that is uh, owned by ourselves. Uh, they are community projects. That's why at the end of the day, when the projects have been concluded, uh, certifications done, they then get handed over. That's why we're talking about sustainability. We're talking about how to make sure that those projects goes beyond a, 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 a construction and how the community are able to sustain it because it, it, it is their projects at the end. Uh, so, so there's no there's no private. That's why, if, if, the, if you'll recall, uh, why the Munisi project, for example, the, the DG was explaining, why the Munisi project was then removed into the into the list, is because the, the, the they took a a a, a a a private route, a process. That's why, as a result of them taking a private route process we then uh, we throw out of that project because we don't we don't we don't fund private projects but we fund community projects uh, uh, the, the issue of the of the arts and culture i thought the, it's, it's a similar matter like the issue of the sun parks uh, it's, it's 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 one and the same thing we are maintaining we've got maintaining programs uh, with sun parks uh, that were maintaining 
the, 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 the infrastructure there. And, and those are decisions that we taken uh, uh, sometimes back and the committee was, 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 was part of that process of making sure that we, 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 we maintain our tourist attraction to be at an acceptable standard. Uh, you are correct that the heritage and the museums, these are products that belongs to arts and culture. There's no, there's, no, there's no disagreement about that. They, they are the ownership, but we have got an obligation and a responsibility a, as a department of tourism to make sure that these attractions remains habitable, remains in a standard that is acceptable a, from a tourism point of view. So if the department A that is the owner that owns that product is unable to service to the level that is required, uh, we, we can't sit back. Uh, we then have a discussion with that department and see how do we share some responsibilities to make sure that that attractions remains at the level that is expected from our point of view, a, 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 from a point of view of a tourism and as a destination that is, a, that, is that will be at the standard that is required. The, the issue of consequence management, I should think it was responded to by TBSA, it was raised by Honorable Winkler around the issue of what are the, if the contractor is unable to perform and all those matters. So Tulani did respond to that uh, adequately to explain how the process unfolded. But I will, I will, I will ask the DG to, to come in and just reflect on some of the issues that might not have been properly or adequately uh, responded to. Thanks. DG? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm largely covered, thank you very much. Honorable Chairperson, on the issue of uh, the, the, the framework agreement and whether we were realistic uh, with the 2023 deadline, yes, we were, we were realistic. Um, things uh, were not the same uh, between 2020 and I would, I would say uh, up until towards the, 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 the later part of uh, 2021. So, so we lost a lot of time, um, that's a reality. Um, and, and subsequent to loss of that time uh, during COVID, uh, we also um, lost uh, very, very crucial time in terms of uh, supply chain related issues uh, during the time when there was a bit of confusion with regards to what exactly that, 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 that uh, the, was the interpretation of uh, the, the Concord judgment. So, so, so all of those will need to be factored, but uh, the planning was, was, was quite realistic. Um, it, had it not been for those, uh, in most of the places as you go to do oversight, you would have actually found people on site doing construction. Um, but, but we still believe that um, uh, we will be pushing to, to, to get most of this out uh, during 2023 calendar year um, so that they are, they are, they are actually completed. Um, the, the other aspects I think DM has covered us, uh, we do have an MOU with the Department of Arts and Culture. Uh, we do have a, an MOU with uh, the Department of uh, Environmental Affairs and uh, we do have uh, the, the, the I would, I would want to also just indicate that uh, these projects, all of these projects that we are speaking to are uh, in, the, in, the, in the APP. Um, and so we, we, we've been very transparent about all of them in terms of what we intend to do, but also important to indicate that uh, the, these museums, like I mentioned with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the Amasuri community, this, this, these museums, uh, by and large, belong to communities, not necessarily uh, in the in the in the in the uh, management and ownership of uh, 
the 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 arts and culture, the sports arts and culture department. So so yes, they are appropriate. The money that we're using is appropriated for uh, in the in the tourism budget um, as 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 uh, per the APP and the the, the subsequent budget votes uh, that 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 ensued. Um, and it is it is indeed part of our broader strategy to make sure that uh, destination doesn't go down. Um, things may not necessarily be owned by us. Um, we we don't have an ownership policy as such, um, but we we would not want to see the the destination going down. And this is why, as DDG was mentioning earlier, the emphasis that we have put in making sure that we 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 are not uh, losing the supply side um, and 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 we, we we take care of that so so this entire estate that is in government hands and some of these very iconic that's why you would find that uh, we've done work in places like robin island um, very very good work um, robin island used to use a, a massive amount of diesel um, and and now you, when you go there, you will find that they've got uh, their own mini solar power station on site, um, which enables them to save a significant amount of money um, in millions per annum. Uh, and over the duration of that particular power station, which is over 20 years, uh, that would probably go as far as between 80 and 100 million rents. In savings um, that would have actually been part of diesel, but it would have also uh, been part of uh, the pollution in the environment and so on, all those kinds of things. So these are some of the things that I actually then have positioned South Africa towards this uh, uh, positioning the destination, and with the consciousness of the various uh, tourists that are, are now wanting to see that we move towards that sort of direction. These are the kinds of things that we should actually be dealing with. That we're talking about cultural heritage tourism, making sure that it actually takes place. If we don't actually get our hands dirty in this uh, regard, uh, so to say, um, we, it will not necessarily happen. Um, so, so those are some of the things that actually drive us on the chairperson to make sure that ultimately we create a destination that you as members who are responsible for this portfolio are proud of uh, that you've got a portfolio that is actually growing the destination, diversifying the destination, and making sure that ultimately the destination appeals to the market. Thank you very much. Yeah, yes, um, I'm very happy um, that DG, you have actually covered and responded now lately. Um, especially in the latter part of your inputs uh, adequately to the question that were raised by the members and also finally responded to all of them and polished them sure. properly. Uh, Honorable Mpushe. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, you want to thank you? Yes, Chair, I have a follow-up. Yes, continue, uh, Honorable Mbushe, um, with your follow-up question. My, my apologies, Chair, uh, for raising my, my mouth instead of my hand. Uh, uh, I know in terms of identifying hands, Chair. Um, I'm not by any way trying to be disruptive. Um, chair, on the, I, I welcome the responses, Chairperson. One, on the issue that has to do with the theft at, at Ngobe, I am, I, am, I am sincerely not um, satisfied with the response. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not sure if it's implying that we must uh, conduct subs in order for us to be able to get the quantification of the lost assets of the department. Because my understanding is that the department has provided assets to, to Ngobe. Then when, when, when that uh, unfortunate situation uh, took place, 
definitely they are to be able to share with us as to uh, this is what we provided and this is uh, the loss and the cost therefore uh, chairperson uh, but secondly chair i think it's worth noticing that in terms of our purpose maybe it's it's it, it was not understood by the department uh, that what provoked the meeting of today is the report that we tabled to the committee uh, on the visit to the two projects in 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 limpombo but 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 nonetheless chairperson uh, I, I i i i i so wish that uh, the honorable dm uh, could be aware that we felt we will not be able to table the report uh, that we presented as those who visited uh, before having uh, this meeting with the department together with uh, dbsa uh, 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 chairperson and also understanding that it, it, it might coincide with the fact that there was an APP that was tabled, but all what we seek was for us to get a detailed report in terms of each project and uh, the budget allocated um, with the GTEC recommendations uh, uh, that the, the, the department uh, should proceed with the projects in parallel with addressing the sustainability model at an estimated cost of 17.7 .7 million then. Um, there was, there was a, a, a lot of uh, issues that were raised in the GTEC report in terms of the uh, feasibility study that were not done. Uh, and the fact that upon visiting Limpompo, we found that there are about 57 projects which are similar to that of uh, Ngobe, which are not doing well, Chair. Also, uh, the fact that at Ngobe, I, I hear UTTG raising the fact that they have not imposed any, anything to the communities. What we have found at Ngobe, Chair, You'll pardon me if I'm out of order, Chairperson. Uh, what we found at, at Ngobe was that uh, the initial project was meant to be a cultural village. But upon implementation, uh, something else was constructed, not that which the community uh, uh, has, has, has envisaged, uh, Chair. And, and, and and also there was um, a misunderstanding in terms of uh, the monies that were spent on the project as, as it was a project which had initially structures that were erected already and the department was to make additions uh, to the structure. Hence, Chairperson, we, we, we so much wanted to get a detailed uh, report uh, in terms of the project you are saying uh, of Ngobe Chair. Uh, also, Chairperson, uh, uh, we, 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 we observe that uh, it has been 20 years uh, for that project of Ngobe uh, not having been completed and there's been wasteful expenditure and uh, no proper monitoring was done on the project uh, uh, chairperson. Worse off the fact that the current structure is being vandalized due to the fact that uh, the communities uh, do not want to own up to what has been uh, done by the department uh, chairperson. Uh, yes. Also, Chair, if the department has not imposed the current structure, what then informs the current design uh, and not what was agreed upon with the community? 
Mind you, Honorable DM, we have a responsibility as a committee upon our visit to go back to that community with responses that will lead to an amicable solution such that they would be able to have a ownership of, of, of that um, a project there in at Ngobe. We, we do not want a continuation of what we have observed uh, upon our, our, our visit, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, yes, I think, I think that's, 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 that's exactly what I wanted to raise, uh, Chairperson. Also, it is true that uh, we did get a response in terms of the consequence management, but it relates to the current projects. Mind you, the reports of, of GTEC was speaking to the projects that were undertaken historically. With those findings and recommendations of GTEC, has there been consequences uh, uh, for, 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 for wrongdoing a uh, 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 chairperson in terms of the project management? Because uh, if, if there was no feasibility study and there, was a, co there were contractors that did not complete their work, definitely there is a person uh, responsible for that, a uh, 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 chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Yes, um, <clears throat> Honorable Bush. Your, your concerns are very, very valid, but at the same time, um, possibly I must refer to uh, Mr. Boldina before we can conclude this meeting so that everyone ha ha has clarity on this matter on how it came to be, we came to have DBSSA and the Department of Tourism today and the withholding of our report for clarity and all that. So let me hear from the, the Honorable uh, Mr. Jerry um, Boltina and the content advisor, possibly they will tell us on how, how we came to have the two presentations. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Mr. Boltina, can you can you brief us on, on the formulation of today's meeting and the purpose? Uh, of having the two departments after our study visit. Thank you. Mr. Boltina and the content advice of the committee. Oh, by the way, Mr. Boldina has a challenge in terms of the network connectivity. Can we have the content advisor and who will be taking us forward in terms of what Honorable Boucher has been raising now? Okay, it, it seems. Honorable Makubela, please assist in this regard. What, what is your, um, your view and what do you remember um, with this regard? We seem not to be getting some responses. Maybe, chair, maybe, yes. chair, maybe chair, what, 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 maybe we can come in in our own understanding. Well, when firstly we want to indicate honorable chair and honorable members that uh, our understanding of the meeting today was not in the context of the oversight visits because the, 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 the invitation that we received didn't refer to any matter in relation to oversight visits. 
our understanding was that you will recall, you will recall, Chair, when we we're presenting the APP, the issue of the memorandum of uh, agreement with with the DSA was raised when we we're making a presentation, and then the chair then said, "No, we'll we'll want you to come back uh, to come and make a presentation." That was our meeting of the uh, 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 during the Indaba. Uh, when we were in Devon with the chair uh, in that portfolio committee when we were presenting the, the APP uh, on the second. The, then the, the, the chair said, no, we want you to come back to, to come and present this MOE, this M, uh, MOA, uh, that is the Memorandum of Agreement, uh, which the committee is calling it the MOU, uh, to the portfolio committee, so that the portfolio committee understand the modern operandi of this memorandum of, an, of of agreement, and that's what the correspondence says that we received uh, that we should come and present this, and it was stipulating what are the things that we need to present. So our presentation was in line with that letter that we received. So we're not aware that it's in the it, it's beyond the it's in the it's 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 it, it, it's not just on the M O A it's beyond that that includes the the oversight visits uh, of the portfolio committee, but also refer to the historical. Uh, projects that were implemented uh, 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 when the department started this process some years back in 2002, 2003, somewhere there, when it was still a, a Department of Environmental Affairs and Tourism. Uh, and therefore, uh, the GTEC report, which a GTEC report we did present it. Uh, to the portfolio committee somewhere in 2019 and the process that we're engaging upon and, and also what consequence management uh, we have taken. Uh, 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 members will recall that we've been reporting what steps has been taken. Uh, the, some, some, some officials were suspended, some were charged, some are, uh, we, we, or even some criminal cases were opened and all. So we did, we did at some point update the committee on what is the thing that we've done arising from some of the challenges that arose uh, 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 detected by the Auditor General's report of 2017-2018 and the GTEC report, and then subsequent the new process that we have then engaged upon of trying to remedy everything that has been identified uh, through the GTEC and the Auditor General's report, which then came up with this new approach of entering into an MOA with, a, 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 with, with DBSA. So our understanding today was to say, how are we progressing with that new approach of the um, of the um, of the uh, memorandum of uh, of agreement. Well, well, in relation to the response by uh, the the on 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 the Ngobe uh, project, uh, maybe maybe something that uh, uh, because myself and the DG were not there. Uh, at least the DG, That's why we asked the DG, DG chair to. To come in because we don't know what 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 was discovered there. What were the challenges? Uh, because we're not part of that uh, activity. At least the DDG was there. Uh, and that's why we ask her to respond. But it, it seems as if she has not uh, responded adequately uh, in the context of which Honorable Boucher is raising. Uh, but it will have been good, Chair, if. 
the portfolio committee having received, having undergone that process, they will have produced a report, which then report then, then gets raised whatsoever concern that committee have found. And then, and then ask the department to respond to that so that we then have be able then comprehensively to be able to respond uh, in that fashion. Uh, but that's, that's the context in which we, 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 we understood for our, uh, our, our, our being a part of this uh, uh, coming to, to present today, Chair. Yes, thank you very much. Uh... Honorable Deputy Minister, you have clarified this uh, matter and thank you so much for that. Uh, Honorable Bush, I think you are adequately responded to by the Deputy Minister in Tourism, Honorable Fish Masalela. I also understand you very well, Honorable Fish Masalela, on how this meeting, uh, the invitation to this meeting is not about that, but maybe we'll have to find space, uh, but also procedurally, we just have to make a report and make recommendations to the house with regards to the, 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 the issues which were raised by Honorable Bush. Um, on that regard, I would like to thank every member who's been attending, who attended this meeting and the contributions of, thereof. Really, we want to thank you for your um, valuable uh, contributions that you've made to this committee. Um, and also, I would like to excuse the department, including the, um, the, the, the department of uh, DBSA, which is the DBSA itself. And thank you so much for your presentations that we really welcomed. And um, if we can move forward, Mr. Boltina, but if he's not there, um, he can uh, someone also flag again the presentation, so, uh, not the presentation, sorry, the agenda, so that we can conclude the agenda. And, and those minutes of the previous meetings. Um, can someone assist uh, Mr. Boltina if he's not available? Thank you. Uh, in terms of, of, of flagging the presentation, thank you very much, um, all members and officials are excused, including the department. Uh, we are about to step. Okay, this is the agenda. What is the item, the next item, Meloni? Um, is it about the minutes? Uh, it's the uh, way forward. Uh, sorry, Chai, hi. It's the way forward yes, as well as the draft minutes. Way forward on what? I think it's just the resolutions of the meeting, which I think you have addressed. Oh, yes. Then you'll be able to pick them up. They don't have okay, to go then, back to them. No, then, then the next uh, item will be the draft minutes. Okay, the draft minutes of each date. I can't see where very well. My screen is very small. Let me see. Um, the draft minutes. Okay, way forward. The draft minutes of the committee. Um, can you remind us the date of the draft minutes, please? Uh, it's the 31st of May. The 31st of May. Any mover for the adoption? Any mover for the adoption of the draft minutes, honorable members? Person, I move for the adoption of the minutes. Thank you, honorable Cindy Maneli. And there any seconder, honorable members? Thanks, Chair. Thank I you very much. Second, Thank you, Honorable Member Mbusha, for seconding. Um, we move to the last item, which is announcements and closure. Yeah. Oh, is there anyone who wants to say something? I hear something there. Honorable members. All right. I move to the last item of the agenda, which is the closure. Uh, and Chair, I don't know whether, can, can you hear me? I, I, I hear you mentioning minutes. Yes, uh, Mr. Boltina, I tried to, to, to engage you earlier on, so you, you were muted, so I'm not sure. You can come in, Mr. Boltina.
Mr. Boltina, please come in. You wanted to raise something on the minutes, although they were at, um, uh, um, approved and seconded, but you can still come in. The meeting's not closed as yet. Mr. Boltina, I, I'm losing you again, and I have to move forward with the agenda again. You are lost again. You changed the posture where you were talking to from, sorry, where you're talking from. All right, honorable members. Honorable Chair. Yes, um, honorable member. Thanks, honorable Chair. Just a, a, a small anyana thing, man, Chair. Uh, on the on our way forward, uh, I I so wish that we write to the department so that they give us the details of each project in terms of its value, uh, not not necessarily for us to have another meeting. Uh, thanks. Uh, Honourable Member Bush, are we going back to the issue of the um the areas? No, it's just, of a, it's, it's it's just a proposal. Yes. Or you going okay? Let's let me take you take us back to the way forward because this item that we're talking about is taking us back to the 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 the, the item which is um, way forward by the committee. So can we also have that noted, uh, Honourable uh, Mr. Boltina, so that we are able to have it captured there by yourself. And then I don't know if uh, Melanie will also tell Mr. Boltina because he seems to be struggling with his connectivity. Um, Melanie, can you please help us to, 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 to engage Mr. Boltina on the issue that Honorable Puss has just raised here in the terms of the way forward. Uh, so we have, okay. yes, we have already approved the minutes and uh, also they were seconded. The announcement, uh, honorable members, I'm hoping I won't go back again, but going back to the announcements and closure. And I want to, I wish to thank each and every member of the mem uh, portfolio committee meeting who attended this meeting and your very, very uh, robust engagements that you have actually um, engaged on. And also thank all the officials for the wonderful work that they continue doing. And I declare this meeting uh, adjourned until the next coming portfolio committee meeting. Uh, thank you very much, honorable members. And I thank you again. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.